Welcome back, Fence fam, to another Ask the Experts weekly live Q&A. Uh, today we'll be wrapping up, as the description says, we'll be wrapping up, uh, doing a wrap-up show for the free training event in Richmond a couple weeks ago. Uh, I tell you what, so one of the guests, Sean King, is, go figure, Sean's actually on the move. He's always on the move. Uh, right now he's actually on an airplane. So rather than, we're going to say hello to everyone in here in just a minute, but we're going to try to get everybody on uh before sean's plane takes off everybody how are you jazz hands it'd be better if i unmuted you guys hey everybody that's guys jazz hands What's up, guys? <laughs> hey, is that Sean? yeah, sean's on an airplane so me might going? not have the best reception sean's going somewhere <laughs> now that is like awesome my shot going somewhere, literally. Uh, I don't know if yeah. I'm there, guys. Can hear. Can hear you. Up, yeah, we can hear you. The video is just a little choppy, but that's fine. So, Sean, let's so, just get right uh, into it before yeah, they make you shut your phone off. No, you're, that is fine. Let's get into it before they make you shut the phone off. Uh, what was what was your perception of the event? Uh, how do you think it went? So, like last time, it was a successful event here. We had a lot of people there that really were engaged. I mentioned that they've been so cool to see so many guys engaged by uh, each other. A great conversation. Uh, Michael, Dave, Steph Defense hosted a great job hosting it. Uh, we, uh, we dealt with weather better than ever before by flipping the days and had some great weather to do and solve. Um, no, I think it was fantastic. My takeaway is we should do more of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that uh, that's probably the biggest piece of feedback I get when I'm talking to guys and gals that attend is, you know, could you guys do more of these? And I'm like, maybe, exactly. but then I wouldn't have like a wife anymore. Um, she would uh, she would decide to not be my wife anymore if I if we started doing more of these. I think. Look at Matt getting all the camera. Hey, Matt. <laughs> it, it it's on How Matt. It oh. is it is definitely on. It's definitely on. Uh, so, no, I met some good, good new friends, some great new relationships, uh, and I'm excited to see some of these guys. Hell, we even had one guy that was out of the business for sure. He was getting out yeah. of it, never going to do it again. Right. And then by the end of the weekend, he's so fired up about getting back into the business. He can't see straight. <laughs> I was talking to him a little bit ago, and yeah, he, he had basically shared that story with me. He said, Listen, I was, the Finch company was done. I was just going to do staining and, ceiling only me and the wife we're just going to do that and yeah he said now not only is he uh is he fired up the fence company again and brought brought some of his partners back but he found a new location and he's just going all in and this is in the this is like within know, days of so him much. leaving the event <laughs> yes yeah they drove back with a straightaway in their vehicle that threw the armrest it's hilarious as an armrest <laughs> bound to be comfortable good stuff so, Sean, let, let me ask you, and, and this is something we're going to talk about in a little bit, but I want to ask you, how would you how would you describe the event to somebody that's never been? Because I think there's a misconception that since it's a free event that there's not there's not a lot of value to it, maybe. how What would you say to those people, or how would you describe the event to try to get across the value in there? I would say it's a wheelbarrow of golden nuggets. Right, have I, Sean, I think we're going to lose you here. It sounds like the uh, flight attendant is telling you to turn the phone off, maybe. By the way, when he sends a wheelbarrow of golden nuggets, I, I agree with him 100%. For even, I felt like I got a wheelbarrow of golden nuggets. Well, from it. Matt, that's a great point. Is I was talking with one of the attendees about it, and they said, well, it's a free event, so you guys don't get paid. I said, well, no, no, no. And, and in fact, we pay to get ourselves there and to do all that. It's like, okay, so what's in it for you guys? Like, why? what do you do it? And that's exactly what I say, Matt, is, is like, listen, just as much as you learn, and you get experience and you get golden nuggets, we do too. You know, because it puts us around each other and it puts us around guys 
that have new ideas, right? So I learn just as much from you guys, you know, my the fellow speakers, as I do from the guys I'm chatting with at the event. Hey, and a good friend of mine um, once told me, uh, I think his name was Joe, that high tides uh, rise all bo- raises all boats. That's right. That's that, right. It, it, and that's true. It really does. Oh my goodness, Caleb, have you been working out, dude? Look at them pipes. <laughs> We might, we might yeah. be a band. You're not allowed to have guns on YouTube, so uh, ah. I might get us kicked yeah. straight yeah. off of here. <laughs> well, Joe, you know, it's a whole other status level when you get banned, so I'm looking to. <laughs> Could be good. Could be good. But, yeah, you know, I mean, Matt, yeah, that's, you guys that's the rise. thing is, yeah, a rising tide raises all the ships. So right. if we can elevate the fencing community as a whole, right, the industry, whatnot, I mean, we're all better for it. So, I mean, we're, I really feel like we're, we're finding and teaching and training up the future fence leaders and future could be in the next couple of years. It doesn't have to be long-term, you know, but yeah, I, I think, well, what you're creating I think there's so much potential there. Forum. Hey, you guys were creating a forum. So that's the magic of having five guys in the room instead of two, because Matt's going to ask a question you didn't think to ask. And Joe's going to answer it in a way you wouldn't have answered it. Right. And it just you pass it around and that's just Yeah, I mean that happened several times, right? When there was a question and one of us answers it, but then that sparks someone else to say, Oh, you know what? Yeah, and then everyone kind of builds and compliments each other, you know, when we're talking about hard questions or hard problems in our business. I love it. Yep. I think it just raises awareness for everybody. Um you know, obviously, in my position, I'm talking to hundreds of contractors all over the country, and they're hey, like, hey, Rachel, what do you feel about this, or what do you think about this? I'm like, hey, well, you know what? My good friend Joe, just like I said, hey, he's, he's gone down this road. Try it this way, or reach out to Joe, or, you know, um, those things come up on a daily basis. I always say to everybody, I'm like, why reinvent the wheel? You know, find what works, you know, for people who walk in your shoes for a very long time, but in front of you. And then um, that's it. You know, learn learn from people who've been around. Yeah, that's right. Oh, hey, we Joe, got another guest. My my daughter Ashley's here. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, the cleaning lady's here, <laughs> which is that person. Uh, so that's funny because my daughter is here as well, and she is also cleaning, but she's in a different part of the building. Hey, Joe, well. high five. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, get to work and close my door. Hurry up. Take out the garbage. Start right, vacuuming. Right. I mean, make don't vacuum. The, make the floor shine. She got some gates to build. Yeah, That's I'm right. going to have her welded next. Yeah, the fabrication shop's way behind. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, that's don't the thing. Is so I think there's one of the problems, and I'm going to say like the royal we, like the, the university has, is that, there's a misperception that since it's a free event, there's going to be a lack of value maybe, right? So, because people attribute value to dollars and we need to, fu- we need to figure out a way to try to get through that. Right. Because I think the number one piece of feedback we get on a regular basis is that there was so much value, like you guys should charge, right? Or there, ha- there should be a dollar amount, you know, and everyone has a different a dollar amount in their mind, but to at least show that there is value here, well, right? And I think, actually, it does cost a dollar amount, Joe. You have to you have to take time off of work. Yep. You have to get in a plane and drive. You have to go there. Yep. So it, yep. it is a commitment, and it's a financial commitment that you have to make to take the time to go to this. And, and somebody asked me the other day, well. What's the difference between what the, this is and AFA? I said, listen, they're both great experiences, and I've done them both. I've been part of them both. I've I've interacted with both. I love what the AFA does, and if you want to get a credential, you have to go uh, uh, that the AFA supports. You have to go there. And Tony Thornton is an absolute wealth of knowledge. I oh, love yeah. that. And this is not a competition with them. This is a guys getting together to say we want to go and make the industry better. And we want to be a part of it. Right. It, right. It, 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 I'm telling you, I came home. We are going to change our software to recognize sections. 
I, 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 the more I thought about what Sean was saying with the whole section thing, yeah, he's absolutely right. We're going to change. Yeah. Our, literally, my salesman is going to change the estimating side of it because we have an estimating platform that fits in there to recognize sections. And, and I learned all of that by listening. It took me three times. Sean finally beat it into my thick head uh, because I'm Polish and I'm not real smart. But I've got it. I, I yeah. love it. But that's what I took away from it. And it's awesome. Well, a absolutely. And, and that's the thing is, so one thing that Caleb and I talked about, too, is that for future events, doing a better job explaining in the beginning also, that this, this isn't just fence and stain training. Like that is, that is a day of it. But the other day is talking about business. So what you're talking about was, uh, you know, Sean had come up and was just basically talking about business and estimating and that sort of thing. And one of his points was that you should be bidding in sections, not by the foot. And this, this subject has come up a couple times, and I think it's valid. The point being, you know, so if you measure in, you know, it, say we're talking about six-foot privacy fence, and it's 100 feet. Well, you're still going to have to have, so you're going to end up having short sections, right? So, but you're still going to have the same amount of two-by-fours. You're still going to have the same, similar amount in labor. You should be charging by the section, not by the foot, because that whatever additional footage it gets cut off and thrown away or whatever. So one of the one of the points Sean was talking about there is, you know, is talking about business and estimating. There's a whole different part of this university than fence and stain. Right. And Caleb talks about so Caleb talked about the basically staining business one oh one. Right. Hit all the high points on what you should be looking for, how you should be bidding it. And then Sean talked about business. I talked about marketing. Matt, you talked about I tell you what, you are like the culture, like mm, guru. Is guru the word? Maybe something like I'm, that. It, it, it's it it makes perfect sense to me. I, I was talking to somebody the other day about culture, and I said, when I think about culture, I feel like I'm one of them baseball players when they say they can see the laces on a fast right. pitch. Right. I feel like I can see the laces when I get that kind of pitch. I understand yeah. it. Now, bidding in sections took me a while to understand sure. because it just wasn't clicking. And yeah. I had, I had, it was the fastball was coming at me so fast. All I saw was it go right by me. But when we talk about culture, and I, I love talking about it, I ain't going for hours. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that we're absolutely the greatest place to be, but our turnover speaks volumes uh, of what we're doing. Matter of fact, I was late hopping on, Joe because I was sitting with the 23 year old that we're grooming because he has a temper and we brought him in today and we're talking about him and we're telling him, listen, when I was 23, dude, I had a temper. This is what I had to do to correct it. And he actually, I believe melted a little bit and said, Holy cow, these guys, they love me. Now, I also care. followed it up with, hey, by the way, when you get done, send your mom a text and tell her that you love her because she wants to hear that, too. Yeah. So those are the culture things that we do that I think are crazy and awesome. Absolutely. But yes. Absolutely. Well, Mike, we, we haven't heard hey, from you yet. You? So... Hey, guys. What's up? You guys, a crazy analogy. I... Hey, Joe, can you hear me? Do it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's talk for a second. Yeah, we can hear so you. A lot of people, a lot of people wonder. Yeah. So if, if you're sitting on the couch watching the Bassmasters fishing tournament and you win a free trip to learn how to fish from the best guy in the world who bass fishes, if he took and then handed you the pole right before he got it in the boat, you landed it and, you, and then he taught you how to skin it and clean it and put it in the cooler and then you went home. Would you feel like you, you learned to fish? And the answer is obviously no, yeah. right? So the way I'm relating that to our, our training, that these events that we do, is teaching you how to start thinking of differently, how to start growing your business, sitting on the couch, how to change your mindset, how to, how to do the whole thing, how to scout out for what you're looking for, how to build the team, how to market it, how to 
keep the books together, how, to, you know, all of those things are important. A lot of people think that just that, that technical part of the job, the tactical level is, is a thing, but we're, we're going to more strategic level and showing you all areas of it. And I think as a young business person or entrepreneur starting out, we don't ever learn those things unless, unless we get mentored by somebody. And so it's the whole package. Spraying a fence or that fence post is, is a very small portion of the business, especially when you get into a bigger business, Matt. You know, that's a big part of Matt's business is building fence, but there's a whole lot of other pieces to that puzzle. And so we want to kind of show you the puzzle pieces and show you how they go together. And then you can take that back and start applying it to your business. And that's the whole idea of it. And the free thing, you know, for me, the free thing, before, before I made this stuff free or started doing this, everybody kept coming to me all these mouthpieces telling me you've got to charge for this you've got something special you need to do online courses that cost money and all this and one night i don't know how many of you guys that are listening are believers but one night god spoke to me and he said this is free you're doing this for free and when i made it free it was like a ton of bricks came off of my shoulders and it- uh-oh uh-oh we better check on Caleb, make sure he's all right. Well, I do I do understand what he's saying, though. Well, we lost you there for a little bit, Caleb. Yeah. But, yeah, so go ahead, Matt. Where, did, what, where do you think Caleb was headed with that? Well, what I'm telling you, um, yeah. I, I, I do. Not to be weird, but I'm telling you what Caleb is saying, I believe, happens. Um, and I tell my people, listen, I, I believe in Jesus Christ, my personal Savior. And I put a lot of power in him. Some people don't. I get that. And I'm not I'm not here to get on a platform and preach that way. But I'm telling you, when you hear that voice in your head, I believe it's Christ speaking to me, uh, uh, especially when I'm serving others. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes I hear that voice in the head and it's Matt trying to be cocky and arrogant. Uh, which I'm trying to tame down in life and understand and be more open. But what Caleb's saying is that he's given a gift uh, to people uh, by inviting uh, these different people and pulling them together. I feel honored that I that I we get invited once in a while. Rachel and I love going and hanging out with you guys, and um, I love it when we sit around afterwards and talk about things because I feel like I learn a lot. Uh, and you know, Caleb, Caleb and I we've talked we've talked about the spiritual part of of the industry a lot. I think everybody knows where I stand in my faith, my belief. Um, matter of fact, Joe, you and I were talking the other night. I'm telling you every single night I've, I've been praying for a thing that you and I were talking about. And I believe it works. Now, I'm not saying that everybody does that, but I believe in the power of it. And Caleb Absolutely. is right. There's, he's given you a gift. It's not free folks. It's not free. I think right. he's not saying it's free. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> that's true and yeah it, it's the whole perception right is that but but you're absolutely right i mean there's a cost involved to go um i mean like you said there there's folks from all over the country there you know there is uh you know obviously georgia there's some folks from georgia here i see in the chat there's folks from all over you know, there's a guy from san diego there i mean he he flew literally across the country to come be a part of it right so there is an investment i got, it. I got an idea coming. There, there, there actually should be a fee for this class, and here's what the fee should be. The fee should be you tell a friend, you get your butt down here, you tell a friend about it, and then when you're able, you help the next person. That's the fee. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You know, Caleb and I have talked about talked about the, the fee thing or charging for it, and here's, here's what kind of terrifies us, is that we know the impact this event can have on people. Right in the the Chesterfield event in Richmond, there was two to three contractors that I've talked to. Obviously, we we're talking about uh, you know the the contractors out of Georgia that had shut a fence company down, and now they're now they're back to they're stoked the fire and they're back in it. They found a location and all this. You know, we see this right, but what terrifies us is what happens if we could have reached somebody but they didn't attend because they couldn't afford it. Right, that you put a you put a thousand dollar price tag on it or a five hundred dollar price tag, and that's too much for somebody and they don't attend. And you just missed your opportunity to sit down at the table with a future fence leader. 
right? Like that's that's nightmare type stuff. Yeah. So I think ultimately that's why the event is free and will continue to be free is because we need to find the people with the fire and have them come to the training. I love it. Michael, what say you? you you've been sitting patiently waiting for a while. Uh, I'm just hanging out. How y'all got doing? Uh, so, so Michael owns Chesterfield Fence there in Richmond. And they hosted the Richmond training event. So first and foremost, thank you. It was a great event. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. It was an awesome time, and I definitely saw the same results. It, just a ton of people were learning. and it, I mean, personally, I've learned so much in the past seven, eight months just from being around y'all guys. That you know, Every time I come to one of these events, I, I gain more knowledge. And like Matt went over the sections it took me a while to get that as well I, I didn't get it at first the first time i heard it but now our company's starting using it and i'm so happy to hear that he's doing my sales and i, I want the industry to use sections because it only makes sense so i mean there's so much golden nuggets involved in all these and if you don't come it's just you're killing yourself well and i think the big thing too is you have to be open to receiving that too oh absolutely right? it, uh, yeah you just have to be. You have to you come have with to that mind. And, and I'm not saying that people don't, but the ones that come and that are just ready to, to open up and receive whatever's being talked about and taught, those are the people that leave with the fire and really end up doing well. Absolutely. There's so many issues that we always go over, different subjects. I mean, if, if you have any issue with your business, someone there will have a solution or, or at least a suggestion that you could try out. And I mean, it, it's just so much like you said an open forum where if you, if you have any kind of question what kind of truck should i use what tires do you use i mean just the little things yeah. like that that just save pennies and those pennies add up to making you more successful oh absolutely well and that's the that's the nice thing about the structure of the event is every speaker is pretty much they have you know a short time to talk and to teach and then there's always an open q a after because you never know you never know where that conversation is going to go so if you're flexible and you let it go where there's a problem or let someone bring up a problem and then just feed off of that, I think that's where the value is. We're missing Sam. Well, so Sam had popped in. It looked like he was riding his bike. Uh, oh. He was getting a workout in is what it looked like. Dude, he's so hopefully a, he'll be back with us. A, you're not hardcore unless you live hardcore, Sam. Well, <laughs> that is the truth. That guy, he, he is a maniac for sure. So, and that's... So Matt was talking about how you know, we we learn at these events too. So <laughs> Matt's got his go big red hat on. But uh yeah, so talking with Sam is is one of the gold nuggets I had picked up. It's just and I had to this is the second event that I had talked with him there and you get you get a little bit, but sometimes it takes a little bit too. But I just to bring things back around, I think the I think the speakers get just as much as the attendees do out of this. Yeah, I really do. Absolutely. Let's go through and say hi to some people. Hi There's some people, people been waiting, waiting patiently in the chat. In the chat. <laughs> bam, bam, what is up? Bam, bam, what is up? Bam, bam. Hey, hey. He never stops working. I believe that. I believe Adam that. Sims with Adam Freedom Sims Fence is here. Got Rowdy Bowdy. Alan Moffitt's here from Scotland. What is up, Alan? How are you, sir? Yeah. It's evening there. It's kind of mid evening. Scotland. Or early. Did this evening. say Scotland? Yeah. I tell you is, what, there's a bunch of just, UK folks that, that tune in here. Is that south of Missouri? Uh <laughs> Scotland, it's actually up by St. Louis. So oh. northeast Missouri. Yeah. Yeah. Totally makes sense. <laughs> Adam Sim says, what a crew. Hey, Adam. Uh-oh. My little man Jackson says, hi, guys. It's awesome. He yeah. probably said that as he was hitting the phone with the truck, if I know him. <laughs> Adam. So Adam was there. Adam says, I was there. The event was the who's who of fencing. Unbelievable classes and instruction with game-changing methods and approaches. Awesome. You know, I, I think so. So talking about methods and approaches, I think that's the other benefit here, too, is that you get – five, six, seven, eight, nine people that all do the same thing in a little bit different way. Right. So, well, in talking to talk again, to bring up the panels versus fear, the sections versus feet is, 
you know, there, can you do it by the foot? Sure. Is there a more efficient way that that is ultimately better at, you know, estimating your true cost? Yeah. And so putting us all in the room where we all figured that out is kind of the name of the game. You get all these different methods and approaches. And so you can try to figure out if your approach might need, you know, tweaked a little bit. Right, Joe. And I want to like just elaborate just on a little bit. Yeah. And when Sean was picking up that post calendar, you know, he, he was just leaning over, you know, not not every fencer is a crop, CrossFit trainer. Um, and people should probably worry a little bit about their, their back. And so, you know, Matt jumped in a little bit just to show him how we do things. Again, just like everybody says, you know, this is just how we do it, you know. Um, just something to think about, you know, we're actually laying the post pounder down, moving the post and then you your your legs to, to pick that up. Um, just to kind of watch out for nothing getting pulled or torn or anything like that. You know, <clears throat> Sean just lifts it up. Boom. There you go. But, you know, um, Rachel, are you saying that I'm fat? Yeah. I, now, listen, when you say we can't all be CrossFit trainers, who who are you talking about, Rachel? I'm not well, you know, Sean does the CrossFit. Yeah, no, I. He, Joe, you teach the 5 a.m. class, though, don't you? Um. Well, anyway, so. <laughs> Rude, <laughs> Caleb. No, and, and, and Rachel, that's kind of what we had talked about through the through the weekend, right? Is that this right. is the way that works for me? You'll likely have to modify it to work for you. Right. But this is the overall idea that we're looking at. Absolutely. Christy, Bo oh, man, I'm horrible at names, Christy, and I'm so sorry. I'm going to guess Bocher, maybe. So sorry. Hey, but Christy. Christy with Chesterfield Fence. Oh, so, Michael, you know Christy awesome. then. Yes, that's our I Butcher that? Is it Bocher? I'm not very good with last names. I think okay. it's but that's I'm, what I should have said. That's I'm what I should have said. I'm not very good. I still can't pronounce uh, one of our it's J O I S E. But every time I say it, it's not correct. So we call him Yoshi. Yoshi. Yeah, there you go, uh, Adam. This was a comment about uh, Caleb's gun show he's got going on. Uh, yeah. That's what I said. But Caleb's I'm, showing off. Yeah. Well, me and Matt, they they did tell us that we weren't allowed to wear cutoffs uh, because our guns would definitely get us banned. Right. For sure. Mm -hmm. Look, it's it's Saturday. <laughs> Sun's out, guns Saturday. out, Caleb yeah. says. <laughs> Active Dad's Rule says, my brother Joe, hope all is well. Same with you. Uh, yeah, so that that's the thing is, you know, sometimes in these events you take away one or two golden nuggets. I kind of share Sean's sentiment that for whatever reason, the Richmond event had the right people at the right place at the right time. Like, I really felt, yeah, like I had a wheelbarrow of golden nuggets coming back with me. Yeah. Uh, it was, it, and it was a little bit from everybody, right? Like, that was that was the great thing, was that I took a little bit from everybody, and you just keep on learning. You never stop growing. Like, that's the thing. The, 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 the day you stop growing and the day you stop learning is the day you start falling behind. I really believe that. Right. I Sarah agree. Kennedy, uh, she and Aaron, so... Sarah and Aaron were the ones that actually took the um, took the straightaway home uh, down their center console. They drove that thing home with as an armrest. So, so this is the this is the conversation, right? Is that in retrospect? So after the event, attendees typically have this to say: "I would have paid almost anything to have what we have now. The relationships we built are invaluable." So people have this experience wow. afterwards, but we have to get them there to have that experience. Right, like that's the tough part is finding the people that haven't been through and trying to explain exactly what's going on. You know, just once you go, you always know. Yeah, I agree hundred percent, Joe. I I do like this idea. Bring a friend. You know, maybe maybe that's you know, if you've been once and you're coming again, bring a friend and that's that is your form of investment, maybe. That's the fee right there, fellas. That's right. That is the fee. Pay it forward. Yep. Project Metal Music, welcome, welcome. Craig Ellis, hope all, hey, y'all hoping all is well. Craig from the Northwest. Hello, Craig. I think most everyone knows this guy, Cannon Johnson. I uh, love that music. guy. Nah, he's, he, you want to talk about somebody that's fired up. <laughs> I, 
Yeah. He, I like that video he had uh, this past week. Well, and, and Sean did too. I don't want to make it sound like anybody's getting left out here, but with a nail gun that fires through pickets into steel posts. That is wild. I love it. I, yep. Matter of fact, and I, I got to tell you guys, Tennessee too. Mm -hmm. that that cannon, that cannon does a nice job. And you know, he's not the he's not the cutest guy. Don't tell him I said this, but he's not the cutest guy in the world. But man, his videos, you just can't stop watching them. That yeah. last one, even like when the gun jammed up, I was like, oh my gosh, I've had that happen. Exactly. Um, now we use a, a gun similar to that one, but a little bit different. Um, but man, he's doing a great job. So Cannon, well done. And I, the Cannon and Dan show is a fun show to watch if anybody's yeah. watched that. Those dudes, those dudes are hilarious. Yeah. So their show, they've got a show on Facebook, and it's Wednesday evenings. Um, maybe it starts at six. It always starts right around when we're starting dinner. So I forget what time it starts, but it's Wednesdays for sure. I'm gonna have yeah. to do that. Who wants to do a show with me? I'm gonna have to yeah. do the Matt, the Matt and Caleb show. <laughs> there you go. Boom. I'm in. <laughs> so Cannon cool. says it's Labor Day weekend. Right now it's 79 degrees in Tennessee, nearly zero humidity. Speaking of praising the Lord, can we get an amen? Amen. Yes, Sounds sir. like a good Labor Day weekend. It's a beautiful day. Hey, Kristen has a great family time. That's right. Rudy Garcia is here. Hey, I'm looking for a privacy fence, something like a rollout. I'm not sure what. Maybe explain that thought a little bit more, Rudy. Hey, that's um, genius. Let's build rollout property fences. That wouldn't be bad. You just roll it out and stand roll it, it up. out, stretch it, and there it is. Sounds like chain link, but uh, all right. Hey, that, we should figure that one out. That chain link with the privacy privacy slats already <coughs> installed. I don't know where that was when my dad owned this company because I was the one that had to put those things in there. And you, if you're doing it privacy on six foot chain link with with twist up. You're always jamming your fingers into those twists. I think I still have scars from that. Yeah. You yeah. Gotta that, go to the chain link with, there in Utah. Genius. Yep. We used that on a project recently, and I was like, where has this been all of my life? That stuff is so nice. Do you guys ever do, Matt, you probably did, the, the, the privacy slash the aluminum ones where you had to weave them? Ugh. Those things were yeah, man. awful. Awful. And they had a bag, and one bag did what? How many feet did a bag do? Like a foot? Yeah, like point two, point two yeah. feet to the bag. I was gonna say like seven inches or something. Yeah, and it was like razor blades. Like I got an idea. How about we make privacy screen out of razor blades? That would yeah. be a great idea. Oh, all right. Oh right, wait, we didn't say hi to Rudy. Sorry, Rudy Garcia from Tallahassee, Florida. Welcome. Hi, Rudy. Colin, what is up? Good morning. We know this person. Chelsea's here. Hi, friend. Hello, Chelsea. Yeah. Chelsea. Oh, hey. Yeah. You show is Caleb, Caleb put a shirt on, dude. Stop it. Stop showing us all up. I know, right? Making the rest of us look bad. How dare you? Hey, uh, by the way, today I'm gonna go up, whoops, and watch my daughter play uh her senior year in college soccer. Oh wow. Congrats. Awesome. You better believe it. It's her senior year. She'll graduate in December. Oh, I started, graduate having, I started having kids when I was about 12. So really, <laughs> I'm only about 40. Right, right, right. And you look good for that for sure. I color this. You're for Polish. Most people are hard kill. Well, that's, I am, I am Polish. Polish. It doesn't come through it in video, but I've got some gray coming through in the beard. <laughs> what I tell people is I just I, I dye it gray so that people think I'm more experienced. You know, like I, I'm wiser. That's what it is. You diet it because it makes you look wiser. Craig says he's installing his own fence with awesome help from all of us. Craig, best of luck. Let us know if you need any help. Absolutely. Kevin gave Cannon an amen. Sean says, another thing to note, due to the structure of the classes, I believe no two classes would be the same. Every time we get together, new stuff comes out. Don't just come to one training. Attend everyone you can. Uh, I think that's a great yeah, I I go to all of them, man. I do. Yeah, it's yeah, just because the structure is the way it is. Like I said, we talk you know, each of the the. Are we called instructors? Like the speakers. There you go. Well, you um, never know what's going to happen. Well, no, because be you know, on a chair. we'll speak for fifteen. 15 <laughs> you just never know what could happen. 
Matt, I don't, I don't think your work comp uh, guy wants to see you doing that. Like, I hey, don't. Uh, I, maybe he does. I don't know. She does. I'm very safe in my ac acrobatics. Uh huh. Only do that if you're a trained professional, right? Exactly. Uh, but no, yeah. So Sean's point is, I think, is accurate in that you know the speakers speak for ten to fifteen minutes or twenty minutes, or or if you're Sam, they speak for a little bit longer than that. Two hours. Got so much information. Uh, but then you open it up for Q and A, and that's I really think like that's the value, right? Is the Q and A because then it's solving real problems, right? It's answering real questions instead of just speaking on a subject. Well, hey, and Joe, and just um, to go move forward on that uh, note, um, a lot of us in the industry or within our own company, we're cross-trained. So we need to know a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So like um, my salesman is, you know, a part of this uh, sister to Empire, but I do the marketing for Empire. So when Sam, you know, comes in and gives us, you know, a little, you know, 411 and a little information on, on marketing and, and you, how you do your marketing um, and websites and all that, um, you know, it, it, uh, uh huh. Oh yeah. Um, I need to implement that, you know? Um, and just like I said, a lot, I think that's a lot that's happening, especially with growing companies. You know, when you're a smaller company, you have one, one person doing 10 jobs, you know, and then as you grow, of course, you're going to have to hire somebody to take that a little bit of load off there, but, but still those companies are, are cross trained in different departments. So I think with everybody speaking, it kind of, hits a little bit on, on several issues. So yeah. Rachel, are, are you saying you wear multiple hats around here? I do wear some hats. <laughs> but no, that Rachel, that's an excellent point in that, you know, you, you need to, as an owner or manager operator of a business, you need to really be cross-trained on whatever it is you expect your team to perform, right? Just so you know, you can set realistic expectations. Absolutely. Right. And just um, so last week, you know, we had a local company to us, um, you know, their lead time was getting way, way, way behind. So Sean came out of Indianapolis or out of Evansville, and then we sent a crew over to help, you know, in the next city over so we can knock out some of these jobs to help out this company, you know. But um, so the, the guys who actually went out on those jobs, they were our sales team, you know, they're, they're oh. the guys doing sales. So so those guys need to have um, that knowledge of what what's happening in happening in the field. So when they go to bid jobs, they have a better understanding of, of what's going on. So, yeah, that was awesome. That's a good point. Uh, so after we went up there, I sent a couple of my, my newer sales guys uh, that haven't really installed a lot of fence. Um, I sent them up there to go build fence and learn it. And when they came back, he said, oh, my goodness. Matt, I learned so much about how much work it takes to move the dirt and how important it is to know exactly where that customer wants the dirt. And, I, and I've said it until I'm blue in the face. Right. But when Sean took them out there and actually did it with them, it, with the Superior Fence and Rail guys, they didn't understand it until they had to grab the damn wheelbarrow and push it and put it in the wrong spot. And when Mrs. Jones came out and said, no, 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 no. I said, I want it over here. That's when they realized, oh boy, uh -huh. I need to do a better job of. So that's part of it too, is working with it. I was, I was telling you the other day, Joe, I wish more fence companies, when you see a fence company out there, stop and say hi. Agreed. Get to know them. Agreed. You never know. Matter of fact, I told Stephanie, I'm like, Hey, we're, you know what? We're, we're to the point where we're about three weeks out. If you need a crew here and there, let me know. We'll come up and slide it in. Yeah. I think she was a little bit like, why? But but we're getting caught up. Why wouldn't we go help our friends? Well, and, and here's why. Because you know if you were ever in that position, how it would feel to receive that. Right? Absolutely. Like that's, that's the why. That is the why. It's more blessed to give than well, to receive. Certainly, and you said something that stuck out to me. How many, how many times um, the, your dad said something to you a thousand times, and you never listened, but then grandpa or somebody else, a third party, said the same thing, and you listened to them. 
So you said something that, that made sense. A lot of times the things you've been saying over and over, when you send your team somewhere and Sean King or Joe or somebody else says it, well, then it, it's true when, when somebody else says it and people will tend yep. to listen a little more. So there's some magic in that as well. Yeah, I, I learned that lesson when I was coaching my daughter's softball team uh, because I she and I played catch and I was working with her on some things and she was just, I know, I know, I know. And then we go to practice and one of the other coaches is like, oh, hey, Macy, uh, what if you did this? And she's like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll give it a try. Yeah. I've been saying that for the last two weeks. And you're like, I know, I know, I know. That's so exactly then, right. Then it out where I hope she's not up here right now. But what we figured out was so all the coaches would like text each other, hey, uh, next week, will you work with Macy on this? Because I've been trying to get it done and she's not hearing me. Uh, but that's yeah, different that's voice. It is. Right. Yeah, it's awesome. That's yeah, what I love yeah. about working with other people. Well, you know, it's a different perspectives, right? You know, well, and, and Matt, like, that's why, that's why, you know, I reach out to you when I've got a question or something, because a, a different perspective is always good. It's always a good idea. Another set of eyes on a problem could see a different angle. Right. right? Yeah. Now, a lot of the times when we're on the phone, it turns out like we're, our brains are on a similar wavelength. So we need, we need to find a third person that thinks like really weird and get them involved. Yeah, hey guys, right. Can I ask because, you a question? Yeah. So have have you all? And I came in just a couple minutes late. But have you all gone over who all's coming and sort of what everybody is going over? Because I know some of us that are listening probably don't even know who we are. So has that happened? Um. Yeah, but we could do it again. Let's do no, it again, man. No, we didn't. I I didn't introduce anybody, and I'm a. I'm a fence guy that's trying to figure out technology, so I'm not the best host in the world. Um, so yeah. so who where are we choosing? going? Who's hosting it? Who's coming? What are we going to learn? Oh, are we talking about the October event? Yeah, buddy. Yes, sir. All right. So we hadn't even got into the October event. I um, thought we were going to introduce these people. Oh, I'm getting... Yeah, yeah let's, let's introduce, like, starting here. Let's just go around the screen, starting there, and and introduce yourself and uh, what you're a rock star at. Well, I am Rachel, and I am the general manager for the My Salesman um, program. Um, so that being said, um, we do have a fence company as well. So we've kind of mastered that whole workflow from um, cradle to grave with that customer, how we touch them, and how we use My Salesman to um, – qualify a lead so we can stop t running tire kickers, make sure that every moment we spend out meeting with customers, we know that there's revenue coming in, which is kind of important in our industry. Um, no, it, it's just uh, know before you go, that's our tagline. Um, you want that information as a, as a fence company um, before we actually go on site and spend time with somebody who never really intends to buy a fence from us, just wants some, some numbers. And, and that's what my salesman does for you. Am I next? Yes, yes. You you are next to Rachel. Oh, that way. <laughs> I'm Matt. I am a serial entrepreneur. I love business. I love culture. And I believe that I am on this big kick. And I believe I understand time and how precious time is and how make sure i want to make sure that i spend the right amount of time doing the right thing to be the most productive in life whether it's being a father a husband a christian a ceo of a company uh, a worker in the field or whatever it is i i am passionate right now i am fired up about time time has been on my mind and i've been driving it home with my crews and my guys i love thinking about how do we create more time for ourselves so we can spend time with the loved ones and what we want to do. Culture is a big thing to me. That's, that's what I'm passionate about. I told somebody the other day, I'm like, you know what? I'm not the best fence builder in my crew, in my, in my, our company. But I do think I understand the human element of what we do of culture and time and grooming that. Ta-da! 
nailed and, it. And, and he did create my Feldman. <laughs> because I, I'm always trying to figure out a better way to do things. Yep, absolutely. All right, so Who's now next? we'll go down there, right here. Oh me, oh uh, I'm Michael Davis with Just Fuel Fence. I'm the owner, and uh, I'm just out here trying to build the best fence and do the best for our friends and neighbors. I'm just believing, you know, just trying to give out as much as market best, and you know, just I love exploring new ideas and. And I'm still growing with our company. So it's just, a, I'm all about just learning and embracing and being different and giving your customers the best experience that you possibly can. I think that's the most someone's spent, you know, what they saved up for months and go to give them the best experience. That, you know, that's what I'm all about is giving back and you can. That makes me the most the happiest. So. About me. I love it. All right, Caleb, the man with the idea. Who are right. you and where are you a rock star at? Well, you know, it's, it's my story and my passion is eerily similar to Matt Warner's, very similar. Uh, it's like we're brothers from another mother or something. But anyway, so I grew up. So first of all, Caleb Roth out of Nashville, Tennessee, stain and seal expert, to be, or an expert stain and seal, manufacturer of stains and stain service company. I grew up in the fence business. That's why I'm hanging out with all these fence guys. When I grew up in the fence business, my dad handed the keys to a fence business at around eight, between 18 and 19 years old, and I struggled. Uh, I would I, at the time I thought it was successful. We did about a million dollars a year in business, or just under it. I never could get over a million bucks, and I struggled and I struggled and I struggled, and I, I wanted so badly to have somebody to reach down and help me and show me the way, and I didn't have it, and I couldn't figure things out. And I didn't know what I didn't know. And um, so I had Dave Ramsey and Zig Ziglar on repeat every day of my life in the truck and listen over and over and over and over and over. And somehow or another, it led me to where I am now. And so now I feel like my passion is to really figure out all the crap that I didn't know before, figure out what I need to know, and make it simple so that I can hand it to the next person because there's nothing more frustrating than having the drive the passion and the will to go out there and just do a fantastic job, but, but you don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. You don't know what buttons to push. You're, you're pushing all the wrong buttons with, with the right energy, but it's the wrong button. So that's kind of what I want to do, and that's that's where these events are for me. My business is, is fun. I love it. But more than that, I love figuring that out and sharing it with everybody else. So, that, so that's why I'm hanging out with Matt. I learn stories from Matt, bring it into my operation, figure out how to make it work, and then pass it on to the next person. That's that's pretty much what I like to do. Yeah. Very good. Make yeah, sense. I think you know, Caleb. You touched on something too uh, in there. In that, you know, one of the things one of the things we get out of speaking at these events is we learn through teaching, also. Right. So, in in the medical field, surgeons they learn one, they do one, they teach one. Right before you, before they can claim proficiency, total mastery of a surgical technique, they have to learn it, and then they have to do it, and then they have to teach it. And each one of those steps, they have to show proficiency at each one of them. And right. teaching, when you're teaching something, you got to think about it entirely differently, right? So I have to know this so well that I can teach you how to do it, and so that you can master it. And it really makes you understand the subject matter that you're teaching right and then and then the questions from the other side of that conversation i don't want to say the student but the question from whoever you're teaching this to the questions make you think about it differently yet again so it's yeah i i we get just as much out of this as everybody else for sure it's important it's important stuff. Yeah. well and, and one of the biggest things caleb has done is he was the founder of stain and seal university yeah. Well done, Caleb. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I applaud your foresight in, in knowing kind of that this was needed and that it would benefit ultimately not only the staying industry, but the fencing industry as well. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. And it, like I said, it's just, I, I just want to make it easier. And I, I had pain in my life over not knowing what to do. What do I do next, man? 
you know, the, 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 I think one of the funniest things to watch happen at these events is somebody says, hey, I've got this problem. And then somebody else goes, oh, well, I thought I was the only one with that problem, but I've got that problem too. And then the third person is like, no way, I got that problem so much worse than you two. And then yeah. what do you know? Half the room has this problem. I think that's a big part, a big component of this too, is realizing that just because you're having a problem and it might be, you know, the problem might be, un it's not unique to you, but it's probably, you know, specific to you or something like that in that. It, well, here's my example is you could go to fence tech and stand in the middle of the room and say, you know what? Everyone else here has it so good because I've got rocks where I build fence. And then yeah. you'll have every person come up to you saying, oh, yeah, well, I got bigger rocks than you do. Or I got harder rocks than you do. Or the guys from Florida are like, I don't have any rocks. I just got sand. And you guys, I wish I had rocks. What you find out is, like, everyone has similar problems, right? They're, they're specific to them, whether, in this example, rock versus sand or clay. Clay's a big issue in some areas. Uh, yeah, and it and when you all distill it down, you figure out Tennessee does in fact have the hardest rock um, of, of well, any other state, lower forty eight, and uh, uh, that's just the way it is. I, you know, yeah, I, but you, you can certainly claim that. But you know, Joe, another thing is, you you talk about everybody has got that problem, and then then some guy stands up and he goes, you know, I was in a similar circumstance, and here's. Here's what I did, and I turned it into a positive, and now I'm looking forward to that problem. Give me all the problems you got because I'm going to turn it into some sweet cotton candy or something, you know? <laughs> and that's yeah. the way it is. So yeah, absolutely. Change your perspective. Yeah. You get a paradigm shift. We are all on the same rock hurtling through outer space. <laughs> you know, that's just the thing. So does that mean we're all astronauts? That's a question I think about sometimes. Anyway. Uh Mandy says it's good to see you all. Mandy, is it Elise? It's, it's we'll we'll keep it. We'll, yeah, we'll just go with that. Okay. She's incognito right, well. on Facebook. Okay, okay, that's okay. Name, I'm with you. I'm with you. Perhaps an alias. Gotcha. It's Ideal fences. Yo. Thanks for doing the shows. Getting our industry plugged in. I find mo I find knowledge a massive motivator. Looking forward to getting more plugged in. Just been busy working in the biz, not on it. That's fair. Like that. Yeah. That's fair. That's what, if we're talking about the events, that's probably, you know, 75% of those that are at the events, right? Or guys that are in the business, they just need to spend some more time working on the business. When is the next event? That is a great question, Matt. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting my calendar out because as soon as I say the dates, they will be absolutely wrong. So we confirmed this recently. The dates are... The 28th and 29th of October. So the last Thursday and Friday in October. Right here in Springfield, Missouri. So we've worked it out. So the the venue, once you get to the venue, you don't even have to leave. So it's a there's a couple hotels there, a couple nice restaurants. Across the street, there's a there's an Applebee's and a Culver's. So you really have just all sorts of dining options. Uh, but they have a fence there on site. That was professionally built by a local company. Uh, it was us uh, that needs stained. So they every year they get a bid for staining this fence, and it's a lot of fence. It's like six hundred and some odd feet of fence. Every year they get a bid, and every year they don't do it right. So I was like, when I'm when we're thinking about where to have this event here locally, I was like, I know exactly the place. It's a nice hotel. They've got a nice restaurant. They also have. Uh, eh, I don't know if you'd call it a, it's not a convention center. It's yeah, they, they've got a bunch of rooms that can hold, that can, you know, hold a lot of people as far as training rooms and stuff like that. Um, so that, what, a, what, a, you know, this couldn't be a better option. And also they just got done building uh, what they call big shots across the street. They own it. It's like a top golf. It's a similar to top golf. Uh, so not only do we have the educational rooms, we got the rooms for the education. we got the fence to stain. we got, Food, which is always like where do these people eat and we got something fun to do in the evenings over at big shots so it's an all-in-one you know once you get there and they even have shuttles from the airport so for those of you that fly in quite literally once you get there you don't have to go anywhere so awesome uh, it'll, it'll be a good time it'll be a good time so and we're still working on who's gonna be there because i, I was supposed to do that this week that was on my get this done this week 
And then half of our office staff was out this week due to a variety. You know, there was a vacation. There was some illness. Uh, and then one of our gals got run off the road in her motorcycle. So and she's fine. She's okay. But she was out of the office for a while. Anyway, I say that to say I went from working on my business to working in my business this week. Uh, but just stuff you do, right? That does happen. It, it does. And you just put on different hats and put on your work pants and you go get with it. <laughs> oh, I thought you were telling me to put on a different hat. I, I do like that hat. I like the Go Bear. Not that I don't like the Empire hat, but I do like the GBR hat for sure. But, yeah, so the last week in October. So here's what I'm thinking, guys. So what I'm thinking, too. So it's a Thursday, Friday event. Hey, that's a nice hat, too. I like that. It's a Thursday, Friday event. It's a two-day event. But then one thing I liked, Michael, about your event was so the speaker showed up on Wednesday – and we got to have like a private tour of your facility, right? You got, you showed us around, introduced us to the people. And for me, like I'm an operations guy. I want to see how this thing works, right? I, I want to just see who does what and how they do it so I can try to apply that to our business. So what I'm thinking is for all those folks that show up Wednesday, the day before the event starts, we just host everyone over here at Ozark Fence. I love so it. It's, I'm I, I was getting ready to say it's a little bit of a drive, but it, it's it, it's relative to where you're located, I guess, as to what's the drive. So it's about 10 minutes away, 10, 15 minutes away from uh, the venue, Ozark Fence is. So I figure, so this is what, okay. And I really haven't talked about this, but it's going to be fun. So typically once a month, it's typically the last Friday of the month, we have final Fridays, which is all the team members. There's no production scheduled that day. There's nothing meaningful getting done so that all hands are on deck and then we do building improvement projects or we do cleanup projects because we went from, so Ozark fence last year operated out of roughly 14, 1500 square feet. Ozark fence now is about 14,500 square feet. So we got more space that we need to keep nice, right? We've got more floors to sweep. We've got more things to go wrong. This building, it's fairly old. It's built in the 20s and 30s, and actually, so where I am right now is the hayloft of a barn. Uh, and then they converted it slowly but surely, and then, anyway, it's got some issues. It needs some upkeep and maintenance. So the final Friday, we do built in the morning, we do building improvement projects, cleanup projects, that sort of stuff. And we all get together and have lunch so that we can all look each other in the eye. The, the production guys can talk to the sales team, can t talk to the office staff. Like, everyone gets together and has lunch. It was also a really good reason for me to go buy a new grill because I get to do the cooking. <laughs> so like this month, I say this month, last month in August, uh, we did tri-tips. Tri-tips and party corn mm. and mashed potatoes. Or no, uh, smoked uh, hash browns So mm. or hash brown casserole. My sister made it. And it was delicious. Anyway, so for this event, obviously the final Friday, we're going to be doing training. So we're going to move that up to Wednesday so that if you guys, if whoever gets here gets here early, and we can kind of go through and show our operations and how they work, but it's also all my team's going to be here, right? So if you've got a question about how we do production, cool. Let me connect you with Scott, our crew chief, and you guys can sit down and you can hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Or if you have a question about sales, Sarah will be here. You can talk to her, the whole thing. Uh, basically, so I was at this one training event with this guy that really has stuff figured out and we got to tour his whole facility and his whole team was there to answer questions. And I thought, yep, that's what we need to do. Um, yeah. So not that, not that we are an empire fence. We are a smaller version. I hope of an empire, fence. but, but no, Dude. that that's, you know, Matt, that's what I loved about your event is that you just made everybody available. Yeah. You could have conversations with everybody and I, man, that was awesome. I loved it. So, that was a, Operation Epic was a fun time. Oh, I, I had a good time. It was so hey, great. So, Rachel, um, are we going to Springfield? Well, I think we might have to divide and conquer. Oh. Hey, I'm springing this on you guys. Like I said, I was supposed to get this done before. Okay. Well, we can do, like, Wednesday, Thursday. We need to be out in New Jersey on Friday, Saturday. Okay. Just I'll so you everybody guys. knows, Rachel's actually the boss. I do whatever she says. That's the best way to have it. Like I, I tell people all the time, I am not in charge of my calendar. 
If you want to, if you want to talk about like my personal calendar, you talk to my wife. If you want to get on my work calendar, you need to talk to my admin because those two people work together to make sure I'm pointed in the right direction at all times. Hey, by the way, Joe, I love the idea of doing the once a month thing. That's a great idea. I need to do something a little bit better. We just had a uh, like an appreciation day that we do once a quarter. Um, but I love the idea of of that of getting everybody together. Um, one thing that I have done over the years uh, is every year I try to pick a major project. Um, this year it was building a pond. We're building yeah. Lake Mallard. I think I told everybody Operation about Mallard. it. Um, and 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 here's what I do is I, I try to make it something really cool and I give it a title like Lake Mallard. Everybody knows around here when I'm talking about Lake Mallard, everybody knows exactly what I'm uh, talking about. And then I try to get as many people involved that I think it gets them out of their comfort zone so I can get them do- going on. But th- I just do that once a year. I wonder if I can make that like little mini versions of that once a month. So I'll tell you where we came from on the on the monthly meetings. Honestly, Matt, we're trying to get closer to your Monday morning meetings. No. Right. We can't do it every week. Just we can. I it's not that we can't, we can, but for us it makes sense to do it on a monthly basis. And so and so the other part of this day, so we have lunch together. And then that afternoon we spend a couple hours talking about, you know, so Sarah talks about residential sales. What do we sell this month? What do we have outstanding? What do I think is coming down the pipeline? Commercial, my dad says, what do we do this month? What's coming up next month? What's coming up the pipe? What's coming down the pipeline? And then production talks about, you know, what they got, what they got produced this month, uh, any roadblocks they had, you know, that sort of thing. So we can try to help them. You know, they say, you know, so one thing that came up a few months ago was, hey, we're consistently like 15 pickets short. Now, huh. we we bring extras with us, but I notice on the work orders, it's always like 15 short for some reason. Well, what we figured out was with Postmaster Post, you have to account for the cover board. And, oh, and our right. average our average project had 15 Postmasters on it. We're like, hmm. oh, okay. So we just know. and But since we're all at the same table having the same conversation, now – Sarah's hearing that, and she's like, oh, you know what? I know exactly what that is. Okay, and she makes a note, and then it's fixed, right? <coughs> it's not, you know, because what used to happen, and and still kind of happens to a certain extent, is Scott, the crew chief, would come to me, and he'd say, hey, I got this problem, and then I would go to Sarah and say, hey, we got to figure out this problem, and it, and it almost becomes a game of phone tag, or uh, what's that? Tele- the game telephone, where you start with one message and it ends up totally different, right? It starts yep. out brown cow and ends up white elephant or something. Yep. So uh, just because those two are on different schedules. So Sarah would be out of the office. So Scott would tell me the problem. Then I would meet with Sarah and then we'd figure it out. Um, this puts us all at the same table at the same time. We also talk about like overall revenue, what we did. Uh, we talk about the P&L. Hey, this is, where the, this is where the money came in. This is where the money came out. This is the money that we're left with to figure out what we can do to grow this company. Do you think this, do you think this has made you a better company? Yeah, I do. I really, really do. Isn't Uh, it amazing when you, when, when you get together, you know, we have all this technology, we have email, text, blah, 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 blah. And we think that we're communicating when we're doing that. But I'm telling you, I I've, I've said, people have asked me what, what made, what, when did, when did it, when did things turn for you? I said, when I implemented that Monday morning meeting and I made it a commitment that we are doing it every single Monday, folks, whether it rains, it snows, we're not going to meet Monday this Monday. We're going to meet Tuesday, but it's still, it's the Monday morning meeting. It's just on a Tuesday, but we do it every single week. And I, I talk about a leadership topic, a life topic, and a safety topic. And then I also give them a chance. If you have a bitch or a gripe, bring yep. it up now. Yep. Let's talk about it. I'll, and I'm telling you, it has changed. And so many people are like, oh, Matt, you don't understand. We just can't do that. And I'm like, what part do I understand? We travel in every single state other than California, which is actually kind of like another country. Uh, so we don't go there. But we are in every single state. And we still pull it off. And it's tough. But you have to make a commitment, which is my 
soapbox about time. Be deliberate about your time. Yeah. Make it valuable. Anyhow, I'll shut yeah. up now. But no. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, so we've only been doing it for three months, four months maybe. Um, after, well, maybe it's been less than that. It's been at least two. It was it was after you and I talked at some point. Maybe it was before Epic, but when the Monday morning meetings is really what I'm trying to emulate here. And, you know, so, and it's, and after talking with Caleb about his meetings, now it's more structured because it used to be just free flowing. We used to just talk about stuff and then they would, now it's more structured. So it's up on the whiteboard. Here's what we're going to talk about. But yeah, so, you know, yeah. complaints and suggestions is one of the bullet points. Who's got, who's got a complaint? Who's got a suggestion? Because sometimes people don't want to say they, they're complaining, but they are suggesting something and that's yeah. fine too. Like, let's talk about it. Um, what 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 was really cool this month is we also have brag we have a brag time who you want to brag on and so then say so my sister so sales was bragging on the production guys because we had just gotten out of a week of 95 to 98 degree weather like real weather so you get humidity and all that on top of that i mean it was it was dog days of summer for sure so they were she was bragging on them She's like, guys, I saw what you guys got produced last week or the last couple of weeks. And I want to say bravo because it was on par with what we produced in the weeks where the weather's nice. So you guys didn't slow down. You leaned into it and you got it done. And I just want to say I appreciate that. And that couldn't have happened. That probably wouldn't have happened if we hadn't have been at the same room at the same time saying grace over the same lunch. That's right. Awesome. So Yo, anyway, I, I mean. I didn't. I would encourage you to just go ahead and and um, and do the Monday morning meeting. I mean, I would encourage you to do it. I don't. I don't think you're going to see. I think you actually see an increase in productivity. Yeah. So here, here's the reason we haven't is so our production crews leave at six thirty so that they can be done by two so they're out of the heat of the day. So I could ask them to stay till eight or seven seven thirty. The problem is, and they would and they would probably do it. Like to their to their benefit, or they would do it, right? They would say, "Yep, if it's for the good of the company, that's what we'll do." The problem is, then I'm asking them to go be out till four four thirty five in the heat of the day. You know what I mean? So it's, that was yeah, that was a true. tough one. It was tough for me, Caleb. I, I I agree with you. I'm telling you that that one hurt me because I I like to get up. I'm I'm a farm kid. I like to get up early, crank my stuff out, and try to get done at a decent time. And I and I don't do well in the heat. If you don't notice, I'm not <laughs> real skinny. So, but I'm telling you, I had to make it. I had to decide. Plus, I want to see everybody's eyes. Yeah, so when I, even true. when they stand around, I tell them, "Look at me. Don't hide behind somebody. I want to see their shoulders. Are, is somebody like this, or is everybody like this? Because if they're like this." I want to pull them off to the side and say, "Hey, you okay? Yeah, you good? I like that. I mean, it's just you know, Joe. Yeah, you're right. It's a commitment. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Caleb. We we have our office staff come in early to make the meeting for us. That way we can get you know, it's one day a week. The office comes in early. They normally come in later. We have them come in early, and it's a it's a big deal. And we, one thing that we do that I learned from a guy on the West Coast is we start with a. Um, a Bible study. Bam Bam, who you saw earlier, he's a, he teaches Bible at his church, and he, he teaches, a, it's about a 12-minute Bible study every Monday morning. We pray, open with a prayer, and then we do a Bible study. And then there's a couple new things I'd like to tell you about. I don't know how to work yet, but there's some new things I've added to my meeting. I start the meeting with good news. Anybody who has good news, personal or business, let's hear it. And that kind of puts everybody in a good mood. Then we do all the same stuff you guys are doing. We talk about the numbers. We talk about this. We do the, the, the training. And I implemented the life skill that Matt does. And I, like uh, I got a handshake last Monday, the basic thing, handshake, and uh, stole it right out of Matt's book. And then we end with two things that I just started doing I think is going to make Who, oh, what, and when? Who said they were going to do what and when? And we make notes of that. So that, you know, all these things covered in the meeting, oh, I'm going to do this, 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 and then it doesn't happen. So who said they were going to do what and when are they going to do it? And then the last thing is we have everybody end with a word or a phrase. 
how you feeling, whatever. But what does this meeting put you in the mood of, word or a phrase? And you talked about putting it on the board. I actually have a have it on a paper. So every part of my responsibility, and I'm accountable every week to take up a new meeting, put the things on here that I want to cover. And on we have everybody sign in. And then on the back, I have, this has evolved, but the number one thing is, did you have a good week? Why? Everybody knows if they had a good week. And if, or if they didn't, and then I put on their why. And then I have six questions, and you can a- answer one or all. Uh, but one is, what should stain and so experts start doing, stop doing, and keep doing? And then below that is, um, what can stain and so experts do to increase revenue, to save cost, to cut, you know, cut expenses? And um, what the last one? My mind went blank. And so to, to add revenue, save costs, and then make a process faster, easier, more efficient. What's something we can do to increase efficiency? And you'll be surprised at the notes that you get. You know, they turn them in. They're anonymous. There's no name on them. And at the end, we all actually sit down and look at them, and we're like, huh, that's a great idea. That's the why you get one that you're, you're scratching your head over. But, man, those things, just those little things make everybody feel like they're heard, I feel like, and you really get some good feedback on it. But I would I would make any amount of money for our for our Monday morning meetings. They used to be Fridays, moved them to Monday. So that was one of the biggest pieces of feedback I got from the team when we're talking about, hey, is this thing is this helpful? This meeting is this does it, do you guys benefit from it? The biggest piece of feedback is they get to have their voice heard. Right. So I, I think a lot of times as companies grow, like to Matt's point, technology almost provides a divide, right? Like it, om- it it makes it easy to just Slack message somebody instead of, I find myself doing this. Me and my dad's office are probably, I don't know, 40 feet, 50 feet apart. I end up messaging him something instead of like getting up and going over there and saying, hey, you know, what, what's this, you know, what's this issue or anything like that. So it gives the team a chance again, to Matt's point, to look each other in the eye and have a conversation over lunch. And then we have a meeting, right? So it's, it's good. It's, I would encourage anybody that doesn't do something like this to incorporate it in your business for sure. The scary thing we started doing was the P and L like that. Not that scary, I guess, but a lot of people kind of looked at that sideways. Um, so, so, so here, here's, so here's what I want to take away. So everybody that's watching on this channel, Joe, I want everybody to understand what, what the university is all about that Caleb does. Yeah. So right there, we just heard your, your, what you do, Caleb, we just heard what you do. And then I kind of gave what I do and, and what works for me might not work for Caleb. What works for Caleb might not work for, for Joe. But I did take away one thing that Caleb said, and I took away one thing that Joe said, and I went, I wonder how I could implement that. That's what this is all about. That's what I think getting a forum together like this and talking about. And, Caleb, we've talked about this a a, a ton of times. And then what's even more fun is then when you dive into it at the university and and afterwards you're standing there – Somebody might come up to me and say, "Hey, tell me about your life skill. What do, what's a what do you teach a life skill?" And then I get to elaborate on that with them on a one-on-one, and yeah. that's what I think is so precious about what we do. That's why I loved Operation Epic. I had out bag toss and I had out washers and all these games, and we had music playing and uh, we had libations. We, we were all hanging out and having a good time. I looked around and I was like, "This." is more valuable than anything else you can force because it's natural. People are learning from each other. And and Joe, I think that's why this channel is so awesome. And I love what you do and what you've done for the fence industry. Um, And Caleb, you are, you are, uh, you might not know this, but you're an inspiration to a lot of people because you're giving yourself and your time and you're sharing your experiences and and you're inviting people like Rachel and I to come along, not even knowing what I might ever say, because, boy, you never know what I might say. Uh, One minute I'm praising the Lord. Next minute I'm swearing like a sailor. I'm I'm a mess. A polite sailor, but okay. (laughs) But, but I love this forum 
And I love what you guys are doing. And I applaud you guys. And I, I hope that everybody that's watching this channel thinks about this. If, listen to what other people say. Don't be so arrogant and cocky to think you know it all. And, and, and don't, don't think in your head the negative thoughts. Don't think, oh, my gosh, that'll never work for me. Think positive thoughts of saying, what's the one thing that Joe just said that I can take? Right? Right, Michael? Absolutely. I got notes. <laughs> you just never yeah, know. I got notes. You know, yeah, you know. I, I love naming problems. I, every time we have a problem, whether it's a good problem or a bad problem, I name it. And then everybody knows what I'm talking about. Well, I heard a guy on the uh, in Oregon talk about that once, and I went, "What the heck are you naming your problems for? That you're not now you're giving it ownership." And I went, "Aha! You're giving it ownership. Mm -hmm. Now everybody knows that we're solving that problem named blah 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 blah." Yeah. Anyhow, that's all I got. Hey, by the way, Joe. Yes, sir. I've got to go. My beautiful okay. bride is going to pick me up uh, at 1130. Okay. And, and, and I'm going to be honest with you. She's only about five foot two, but she's really mean. <laughs> uh, we've, we've got that in common as well. Um, but, uh, so so I'm going to probably uh, jump out at some point in time. But uh, I want you guys to know from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate you guys. Uh, and I love going out to Virginia um uh joe i think i love our friendship and how it's grown and thank you for calling me this week so we can uh have it you actually canceled me you called me with a problem and you canceled me through another problem that i that i was having so thank you for that caleb you're you're awesome dude uh, uh you inspire me to be better uh better in my faith and my walk and rachel you know i love you like a sister um but i'm gonna sign off uh peace out thank you so much for everything Thank you, Matt. I appreciate you joining us. All right. Toodaloo. Thanks, oh, TTFN. You know what that means? Talk to you for now. Ta ta for now. All right. Peace out, guys. See ya. All right. I tell you Rachel, what, Matt. We're going to have to count on you throughout the winter, though, for the video contest. Matt, Matt's left, so we didn't get to that. I know. So, yep. Yeah, that's. I need to be better organized. Rachel knows what he's going to say anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, so let's talk like about it. Let's talk punch. about the video contest we had. Because I, I, I posted in the Facebook groups, hey, tune in because we're going to announce the winner. And then like an hour and a half later, we're getting to it. So maybe should have led with that. But so what, what was the contest? Uh, the contest was, so we announced it at the Virginia training event there, there at Chesterfield Fence. Uh, and it's one that I like to do kind of at, at each one of these. Matt makes a, a cameo. Uh, it's, it's a contest I like doing at these events. And so what it is, so what I talk about is basically video marketing. And it, it is you should be the face of your company, right? And you should be the one answering the questions that get asked every day. And but well, what I found out was when I gave this talk and then I watched like because the, the speakers get a list of the companies that are coming. And so then I'll go and check out their Facebook pages a week later, two weeks later, and no one's doing these, right? And, and it's kind of frustrating because I know the results that can be seen if, you know, these companies were to implement live videos and or videos in general. Live videos are best because you don't have to edit them. And it's just for a, for a whole host of reasons, live video is best. So I said, you know what? We're going to have to motivate and and so we're going to have to put some money into this. It needs to be a contest. It needs to be for money because that typically gets people's attention. So what it is, five live videos over five days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The videos are the who, the what, the when, the where, the why of your business. You know, who is Ozark Fence? What do they do? When do they do it? Where do they do it? But the biggest one, the most important one is the why. Because the why is what connects you with your community or they connect you with your clients or the why is the, is the, is the cool story, right? So you had to do them all. You had to post them every day and you had to share them to the group. So we had, so I went back and looked, we had four contestants that posted every day, shared it to the group. They followed the rules, right? And that's hard. So 
The reason that's hard is because each of the four were phenomenal. Like it, they really, they really were. And so then it's like, well, okay. Like, do we just, the easy way out would be to just say, you're all winners, but then it's a participation trophy. Right. And if there's one thing wrong with our world today, I really believe it's participation trophies. Uh, we don't, we don't allow them in the house. I don't, I think they're a bad idea. So anyway, so we, so we, we discussed had, in we the had four uh, contestants. Yep. Yep. So, so four contestants. Yep. How many winners? Two winners. So, well, Two winners. Okay. there's typically one winner. And then my sales. So then Matt volunteered Rachel of my salesman to sponsor another winner. So there oh, are two first runner up. Yep, yep, yep. There, yeah, so you get first place, second place. Unfortunately, there's no third place. But it is what it is, right? And and I want I want to reiterate that I enjoyed watching them all. So um yeah, I'll say it. So in other contests, um there was a pretty clear winner, right? Or there in this case there would have been a pretty clear couple winners. Um but for this contest there wasn't really a clear winner. I think they all did great, right? They they were personable. They were they were doing it for the right reasons, right? It wasn't just because it was a contest. They were literally doing it for their business. So, I don't know. That made it hard. That made it hard. Um, I'll say I'll say this without putting anybody on the spot because I almost thought about having the four of us talk about who we thought. But I'll say this: there were votes for everyone, right? So in the in the group chat and the group uh, messenger that we all put together, everybody got votes. And so then it was, well, and I'll say this second place was one vote. There's one vote difference between second place. So anyway, we'll go ahead and announce it. So, uh, winners are in no particular order, Chattahoochee fence and map fence. So there were a couple others that, that participated and you all did great. I want to keep it reiterating that, but the winners are Chattahoochee and map uh, in no particular order. We're not going to say first place, second place. We're going to say winners are, um, yeah. What do you guys, what do you, what do you guys have to say about it? What do you, what did you guys think of the videos? I, I thought they were raw and real. I mean, it was, it was <laughs> Sarah and Aaron were like, I can't believe it's this late at night and we're doing this. And, you know, the, everything was just very raw and very real and um, takes a lot of guts to jump on a live Facebook feed. Um, and I just want to applaud them all. You know, um, they did a great job. I agree. I agree. Michael, what do you think? I think they did wonderful. I was excited to watch them every time one would pop up. And I, I learned stuff from their videos as well. It's like, you know, it's, it's not just that, but I was like, oh, wow, it's a great thing to say. So some were, you know, uncut and just they were coming up with things right off the top of their head. That was un unbelievable. Agreed. Caleb, what'd you think? Joe, I liked them. I, I think um, keep doing them. Yeah. Get, 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 them, get them precise. Start getting something where people look forward to it. I really liked what the map guys were doing. I liked seeing all their extra stuff because they were putting out a lot of they're doing marketing in other ways too, which which gets me excited. So I really like seeing that. I like seeing the underdog win. So I like seeing these guys that that are just starting out crushing it, and that's that's what I like. So I think this is a good thing you're doing. I think that's important to I think that's important to reiterate, Caleb, is that I truly hope these videos continue, right? Because that's that's where the magic happens, right? Yeah. So you get through the who, what, when, where, why, and then you just so that this is obviously a take from Marcus Sheridan's they ask you answer, but I hope you start answering questions that your customers have for you in live video, you know, and, and that could be pretty straightforward. Like literally it could be, I have answered this question, whatever the, whatever the question is, Hey, what's the difference between cedar and pine or Caleb? A great question is when can I stain my fence? Like that question comes up all the time. So that would be a great opportunity to just grab in your office, grab the phone and say, hey, guys, you know, Joe, those are fence. Question I keep getting is, when can I stain my fence? And the answer is, bop, 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 bop. Uh, if you guys have more questions, please let me know. We'll talk to you guys later.
That's a whole thing, right? Like, I really want to see that continue. I hope it does. Because um, I, th it does nothing bad for the business, and it's only good. That's the thing is there is no risk-reward here. It's all reward. Yeah. But, but to Rachel's point, you got to get vulnerable a little bit, too. Like, yeah. It is real, and it is raw. But well, no, you're I, just I get pushing people to get... I got to tell you a little secret. So the first time I did a live video was probably in 2017. And it would literally take me about 30 minutes. So I put the live video on and before I hit play, I'm like <laughs> looking at my notes. Then I'm like, oh, no, Matt. I mean, this was before we had this bigger, bigger space. And we had we were more on top of each other in our older office. So I'd have to literally go out and tell Matt, hey, I'm going to do a live. Please don't swear or just be super, don't burst into my office. And then I'd put like a little sticky on my note, a sticky uh, note on my door saying, hey, this is live, you know, so um, nobody come in. So it 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 is, uh, takes a little bit getting used to, you know, doing that live feed and um, you do become more comfortable with it. And, but also I think it's important to have those ums and uh, and those uncomfortable pauses because it shows, hey, you're just like me. You know, we're all in part of this industry and you're trying to give me some information. And I'm going to receive that and you're human. <laughs> so, well, that's absolutely right, Rachel. You know, the example I give is like a Mercedes commercial. And I'm not picking on Mercedes. Insert any name of automobile person here. I just say Mercedes because they have nice commercials that are shot well. But when you watch a Mercedes commercial, you absolutely understand that that is a sales pitch, right? Oh, we lost Michael. Oh, there he is. He's back. Mm, maybe not. Hey, you absolutely, you, when you watch a Mercedes time. commercial, you absolutely understand that it is a sales pitch, right? You know for a fact that they did this to get you to buy a Mercedes or, or have a better shot at you buying a Mercedes. Now, I think if Mercedes had a guy with a GoPro and a cell phone video himself driving around town in this car and have his family involved, and that, 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 I think it would be more impactful. I would watch it. You know, it, Mercedes commercial comes on, and usually I'm watching recorded TV, so I just skip right past it, right? But if it was real, if it was a guy living his life in a Mercedes Sprinter van or something, like that would be neat. That would be interesting, I think. Yes. And that's what we're wanting you to do. When I say you, that's what we're wanting people to do with their business, right? We're please don't be professional. Please don't be rehearsed. Please don't be just so prim and proper. Be you, you know. And you know, if if you're like Rachel and prim and proper is your real, then you just do that, and that's fine. But no, it's. Be you. Like, that is the biggest piece of advice I can give. It's just be you in video. Yeah. Joe, my first videos, when I first started, everybody, they thought I was a Facebook or social media marketing guru. They were like, you're so good at this. And I thought the only reason I was on Facebook was because it was for free. <laughs> I would show up to a stain job, and and I would have a nice clothes on, a nice hat. I'd be well together, and I'd say, this is Caleb with Central Tennessee Fence Staining. I'm here ahead of the crew. They're on the way. They're going to do this fence staining job. And I just wanted to show you the backyard, what it looks like now. And here's some of the things we're going to do. And we'll get back to you once the crew arrives. And once they finish it up, we'll show you what it looks like. And then I'll change clothes. I'd put on my suit. I'd stain the fence. When I get done staining the fence, I'd clean up. I'd put on a fresh hat and a fr fresh shirt. And I'd say, hey, look, back with you. It's staining, or, you know, it's staining sale first now. But, the crew just left. They're headed to the next job. But look at this beautiful job that they did. And I'm just doing an inspection here to make sure everything looks right. Call, and I put phone number, the email address. And I do that in a live video. And, of course, other people probably noticed that the first video I was nice and clean. The second video, my cheeks <laughs> were red. I was hot. I was sweating. And my hat was pulled down a little low. And that was it. And, and that's how I grew my business. And so the point is, is becoming uncomfortable or becoming comfortable in uncomfortable situations and just putting it out there because it's going to grow, it's going to feed your family, and, and that's what it's all about. Absolutely. That's Michael, what do you think? Perfect. I think that's a great idea. Just keep making more videos. Yeah. Well, in, in the video, so say 
which isn't possible. But say you all you got through your who, what, when, where, why, and then you've answered every question possible, which is not possible. But say you did that. Uh, I, I bring this up in every one in, in every one of my talks, and actually John's here now. John Bowdy, Stony Creek Fence. What he does is he simply does a, a well, kind of what Caleb was talking about. He does a job walkthrough, right? Yeah. You're going to have to be on site anyway. You're going to want to put your eyes on this project after it's done. Why not press live and show your future clients that you do this, right? So John literally just says, hey, guys, you know, John Stony Creek Fence, we just got done building this, you know, six-foot privacy fence in such and such neighborhood in such and such town. And I uh, wanted, wanted to bring you guys around for the along for the walk around. Here's some things I'm looking for. Is the dirt picked up? Is it, you know, and he goes on with all of his list. And then he just takes them around the job site. You know, at the end of it, hey, guys, let me know if uh, there's anything I missed. Again, John Bowdy, Stony Creek Fence. If you need a fence, I'd like to talk to you about it. Hey, every, hey, everybody. I, I, I'm I, sorry I have to leave right now. I actually have a uh, bridal fitting. So, nice. happens, but, <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to say uh, thanks for having me on, everybody. And, uh, you know, thanks again to Chesterfield Fence. I mean, Michael, I know what it means to shut down your business to, to host such an event. And it's yeah. it's not only, a, you know, it cuts down on your revenue and, you know, your time for um, what you need to be doing um, and your sacrifice to the industry. And I just appreciate that. And then, of course, you know, Caleb and Joe, thanks for getting there and, and organizing this. And, and uh, we are glad that we could be a part of it. And uh, to everybody out there, um, have a great weekend and uh, we'll uh, talk to you soon. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Rachel. Appreciate it. And then there were three. <laughs> but no, All right, that's... now we can get on to the important stuff. No, now now it's just us. We don't have a we don't have a, yeah. a a pretty face on the stream anymore. So then we'll probably watch our viewership decline rapidly at this point. Uh, so I tell you what, let's get caught up with comments here. So. <laughs> So Sarah, so Sarah's the one that had to drive home with the uh, straightaway on her center console as an armrest. As long as Sean doesn't inv invent any more big items for me to ride home with, we'll attend. Looking forward to it. Um, I, I actually, I think we already talked about this. I'm just getting the industry plugged in. You know, I think the more shows we have like this, you know, like I said, uh, or like uh, Matt had said, uh, Cannon and Dan do a weekly show. I think the more of this we hit, we get we get going, we start up, uh, the better, right? So it's just sharing an idea, sharing our ideas at scale, which is, I think is good for everybody. Chattahoochee fence. One of the winners says, what's up everybody attending university changed my life. I'm overhauling my entire business. Thanks to all of you. I haven't been this enthusiastic about my business in a long time. And that's why you good. do it. Awesome. It's like great if we're talking about why is that's why. Yeah, get fired up about business. That's great. Keeps you up at night. You're thinking about it. It's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like I said, that's that's the why is because you get to hear cool stories like this. You know, so hopefully, you know, that hopefully that makes Caleb feel like his time was worthwhile. And Michael, his time and money makes it feel worthwhile is knowing that, you know, Aaron and Sarah at Chattahoochee Fence, I talked to them for a little bit after the event and since the event, uh, I really think they're going to be some of our future fence leaders and, and probably in the near future, if I were to bet. Um, but if Michael hadn't hosted the event, if Caleb and his team hadn't organized the event, we probably would have never met Aaron and Sarah and they probably would have never, you know, they would, they would be killing it and staying, I'm sure. Uh, but they wouldn't have been fired up about fencing. So thank you guys. It's definitely a group, uh, group effort in that for sure. Craig Ellis says, I'm using 6 by 6 by 8 for the corner post with Postmaster posts in between and closing my vacant space adjacent to my home there in Birch Bay, Washington, 230 feet of fence. Um, Craig, I'll say this. Actually, we just removed a fence. Uh, we replaced a fence this week that was similar. They used 6 by 6 on the corner and 4 by 4 for line post. Um, you, use those Postmasters on the corners, too. I mean, I, you, you guys know, corner, see this often. Where not near as important as you think. Yeah. Well, and I understand where the where the concept comes from. It comes from chain link fencing. Yeah. Where your corners are your anchors. Yeah. Uh, you're pulling you're pulling from the corners, they're supporting gates, all that. Uh, with a wood fence, every post supports the next one or the next few down the line. 
So I would say I would like to cut wood posts out of this equation as much as possible. So postmaster posts on all of them. If you got gates, I would use a steel post on those as well. Ozark fencing has helped me again. Thank you. You're welcome, Craig. Always happy to help. Shane Cannon said, told my leadership coach this week, time and culture effectiveness are key. So this is when Matt was okay. talking about culture being culture and time being important. Um, I think, I personally believe culture affects effectiveness, efficiencies. Uh, culture affects your efficiencies. If you have people that are satisfied and that, are, that enjoy being there and are all headed the same direction, I think your efficiency has to go up for sure. Well, in your life enjoyment, who, who yeah. wants to walk around work with a bunch of people who are miserable? I mean, yeah. let's life, life is short, so we should enjoy it. Well, that's one thing I noticed at Michael's place is that Michael obviously does a good job at building culture because everyone there, I mean, the guys, the guys work pretty late those, those couple days and, it was just another day for them. They love you know it. what I mean? They, they got that them. puppy dog on the shirt, man. That's why. They got the puppy on the front of their shirt. That is it. That's key. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to start implementing that at our place probably. <laughs> My, Michael, what, what, how important is culture for you guys? I mean, obviously, obviously it's important because you guys have good culture. Um, I'm still learning how important it is. Like, I mean, I, I believe it's one of the most important things, obviously, but I still learn every day how important it is when you hire the wrong person with the wrong attitude or if you bring in someone in, no matter how much they don't want to don't want to be open. They just close minded people. So it's like it's it's hard to change. I've learned like hire purpose hiring. So that's one thing like in the past year I've learned is hiring people that have a passion for what you're wanting them to do. Don't just like go find somebody and. He doesn't care about building the fence, but he wants 25 an hour or so, such things. And, you know, the money's not the key. It's actually just purpose hiring, finding someone with the passion that wants to do what you're offering them, that loves to do it. And, and yeah. that worked for me. Yeah. One of the things we say during interviews is, is so when I'm wrapping up the interview, I said, just so you know, uh, this interview is less about what's on your resume and, and it's less about how you answer the questions, but it's more about, me just trying to figure out if you're a good person. Mm -hmm. I can teach people how to build fence. That is a teachable skill. I can't teach people to be good people. I haven't figured that out yet. So that's, that's really the thing, but you obviously do a good job of it, Michael and Caleb too. I don't want to minimize Caleb, but that was one of the things I was really impressed with when, I, when we visited you guys was just how on board the team was. I appreciate that. I, they appreciate that as well. Yeah. I, I mean, I've, I think we all know businesses and companies out there that uh, don't invest in culture and don't invest in team building. And those are the ones that, that Caleb talks about. You always have those one or two guys that show up grumbling and just are not pleasant people to be around. But I tell you the hardest thing we had to do um, when I went and not say anything about my dad, but when we well, actually, this happened before is uh, we had to let some people go that were incredibly skilled but they just they didn't have great attitudes about it, right? They were hard to work with, and they were just generally not happy people. And we had to let them go. Uh, can and I that's interview hard. about? Can I interview you about that, Joe? Yeah. Yes. So, so how you, you once you came to the decision, you had to let that person go. What were your emotions like around it? What were you thinking in your mind? Oh, it's terrifying. Because they. They were and great so, at what they did. They were they were professionals at what they did. Were you worried about repercussions on your team? No, it wasn't really that. It was it was me worried about repercussions for production. Okay. It what was, happened? What happened? How did you feel right after you did it? And then how did the team feel right after you did it? Yeah. So what we found was that yeah, everyone was happier for sure. And what we also found out was that his his team was doing more than than what they thought and what we thought right so so turning turning this guy loose didn't necessarily have the negative production repercussions that we thought it actually didn't really affect anything at all uh, other than having to find a new team right. member to put in a new SWAT but um, 
not it wasn't as disastrous as I thought it might be because the team found out that the team he worked with found out that they were more capable than they thought. You know, so not only was then, he then uh, what happened what happened so moving on, did somebody better come along and fill their shoes? Yeah, so that's ultimately that's what we found out was his so if you guys have met Scott, you know the guy like he's my right hand man for production and he was he was this guy's second man. So we, all this time, all this time we had Scott, but we didn't know we had Scott, right? Because we had this other guy that honestly was probably holding Scott back because yeah. Scott deferred to him on a lot of things and did things his way a lot of the time. And so letting this guy go freed Scott up to be himself. You know, he pr got promoted to crew chief. Uh, at that point, at that time, we called him foreman, uh, but he got promoted to crew chief and then he took over the crew. And then ultimately he kind of remodeled how we build like the process and how we build fence. And he brought a lot to the table and he still, he still continues to bring a lot to the table. Um, yeah. So ultimately it was, it was a good thing. Morale was higher. Yeah, so I, I agree. So I think that a couple of emotions you're going to feel if you're in that shoes, cause I've been there. There's fear, there's there's worry, and there's there's all those emotions. Once you yeah. once you get over it and over the hump, things tend to what what I would see every time that we've made that thing are we're going up, then we let that that negativity go, and we do this, and then boom, we shoot to the sky. Better people come yeah. in. It's in in my business every time I let that person that was getting a lot of stuff done, but they were negative. Every time I let them go. It's like on the, it was like a slingshot. Every time I let them go, it was just like, boom, it propelled us to the next level. And I think what it was is it was a combination of things. So um, if you're having that fear in your business, cause you got just one person who's just, you know, and I, and I'm all for helping somebody if they have a problem, but if you got someone that can't be helped and won't be helped, um, do yourself and your team and your family a favor and, and make that jump. Cause if, if they're miserable, if they're making everybody else miserable, they're miserable too. Cut them loose. Let them go find that thing that they love, and then yeah. that's going to free your team up to to move on and propel to the next level. Well, absolutely, and, and ultimately, that's why we made the decision was that we were willing to give up a little production to have a more enjoyable workplace, right? To Life not have shorter. these arguments on a weekly basis about little stuff, to not have team members just honestly not enjoy working here uh, we said you know we, i will trade a little bit of production for a better place to work and then what do you know we actually got more production in in the end we ended up increasing production significantly it's funny like how that said, works isn't it it is yeah and and so that's kind of where i started crafting that opinion that culture improves efficiency yeah well joe if i told you to jump as high as you can before you jumped what would you do do what? Uh, if I told you to jump as high as you can, what would you do first? I would bend down. You would squat. You would yeah. lower yourself. You got to go down before you can go up, man. Where that's you can jump up. That's a good analogy. I like that. I like that for sure. You know, I heard somebody, I don't know who said it, um, but somebody referred to their team members as internal clients and their customers as external clients. So we're serving both. We have to serve both. And if we serve our internal clients, our team members supremely, they will in turn support our, they will treat our external clients supremely. I thought, I thought that was an interesting concept that you have yep. to treat both equally and one will help the other. Excuse me, Joe, give me a 30 second break here. Of course, make, of course. Grab something. So Michael, I, so actually I want to show you this. You probably saw this comment already but i want to bring i want to touch on it uh michael's being super humble he's crushing it um i think i i think this is a kind of a general consensus michael i really do um that you know after after talking with your team after talking with you and at, just seeing it work like seeing you work with the guys and seeing all that um i it is incredibly impressive what you've built i appreciate that it means a lot coming from you well I'm just, a, I'm a guy with the fence company and, and you are and, the and, fence expert, Jeff. <laughs> no, but, but seriously, seriously, it's watching you interact with them is, is impressive. It really, really is. Let's talk about 
so on the vein of employees and hiring, tell me, so what does your interview look like? So say you're hiring for a certain position. What does that interview process look like? Okay. So I, I, we have a hard time finding, it's not easy finding people, obviously. So that's the hardest yeah. thing like, is, you know, go through one, one in 50, that's even going to show up and then give you the time of day to really interview them the way you want to interview them. Yeah. Um, but if I do get a good interview, a good person that wants to be a team member, it would start off with just like, so what, what, what are your life goals? What do you see yourself doing in five years from now? And then they would tell me, you know, well, I really want to find a career. Me and my girlfriend might want to get married or, you know, blah, blah, and start talking mm-hmm. about their life. And then mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I love going to the lake. What lake do y'all go to? And we just start to connect there. So it's not so awkward when we get into the other questions. So I yeah. really build a friendship with them at first. And then after I build a friendship, I ask them, what, um, what skills do you have? What skills do you want to work on? What skills would you like to have? And then they kind of tell me about like what they've been doing, how, how they did it and what they think makes them so good at it. And then I ask, you know, well, well, do you like doing that or what do you see yourself doing? And then they tell me what they want to do. And we move down the pole of like what positions I have open and then yep. see if any of those positions interest them. And if they do, we see, you know, how well it fits. And I, 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 my interviews go pretty fast. They're only about 30 minutes, maybe an hour. I don't talk a whole bunch about the job because I'm more worried about the person than I am about the job. Bingo. And, and that's kind of where I, that's kind of how I thought that would go just like I said, seeing how your culture works is it, it, it we're much the same, but I like the fact that you started off, not even about, not even about the position, right? Tell me about yourself. What I like asking is like, tell me about the job you love the most. Like I see in your resume, you've had some does. Tell me about the one you like the most. Well, I'm sure you have come across it where you hire someone and they applied for a position, but they never wanted that position. They just wanted yeah. the so I make sure like at first, like, cause they come in and they're, you know, applying for a forklift or a material handling position or something. And like, does this dude even want to do that? Like, is he even going right. to be showing up or is he going to come in late every day and leave early because he doesn't want to be there? Not doesn't even. enjoy it. Yeah. That, that's how I got to figure out first. If that's even right. And then if, if what you are interested, if we even have something that at our table to offer you. Yeah. Interesting. So I think, Yeah. And, and that's that's important too because if they so say they get the job, but that's not even what they wanted to do, that's probably going to lead to culture issues and morale issues. Yeah, I just had the sweetest interview yesterday with like, go, oh, I'm so excited for this. Um, this guy, uh, oh, man, he's worked for Delta, he's worked in the military, um, and he still works for Delta, so he still gets his perks and everything. He's not going to give that up. He only has to work like six hours a month. Nice. And he's in the Army Reserves and just, I mean, just such a humble entrepreneur. He, um, right now he does, um, he has a company and he, he does, uh, hauling away like debris and demoing like houses and decks and fences and all stuff, kind of stuff like that. And he'll even dig your foot in holes for you for your deck. I mean, the dude will do anything just to get more business and to keep your business. So I, you know, I, I, I've been having a problem where we've been spending over a thousand dollars a week in dumpsters. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, this guy, he's having problems. He, I'm having problems. Let's see if we can get together. And we got together and and then within the next two, three months, I think we really are going to have another part of our business grow. We are going to get a Nazuzu with a roll off and have a couple roll offs with a couple flat beds. And he's going to be doing that and kind of grow a roll off company with us. And we'll kind of partner using our lot. And it just, it's really opened up a whole nother side that and then opened up a standing side six months ago. That's, it's, killing it and i love the staining part thanks to caleb he's the man he has helped me so much in that field i mean and his team anytime we have any questions his team is there like i mean it doesn't matter what time of the day it is it doesn't matter what question it is they're gonna they're gonna answer and figure it out so i've just i've just loved everything and just we keep growing and it's just every day it's like a new surprise where we're like oh now we're gonna start doing this and we found the perfect guy you know it starts with hiring the right teammates and then people like are attracted like they'll see what you're doing and they want to come be part of your team so that's a real thing you know and and the saying is rock stars attract rock stars right or all stars attract all stars however you want to say it but you know if you had you know if if you had an all-star you know, I like watching baseball, an all-star pitcher. He's not going to want to go play for a minor league team. 
right? Because he's just going to know, hey, my talent's going to be wasted here. Is these, you know, I I really view that is once you start, once you create a team of all stars and rock stars, they're going to help you attract more, right? Okay. Now, the problem there is you let a B player into an all star team that starts to have morale issues as well. You right? hit it right there. It's it's knowing when when you have the wrong wrong position. That's the hardest part. Is like you could have yeah. all these rock stars and then one person brings all of them down. Well, yeah. and that's and that's a that's an interesting point too because you said in the wrong position. So, you know, part of this is too trying to figure out, hey, are they the right person? But to your point, they're in the wrong position. Yeah, I mean, everyone good person like a majority of people are good people in like your people that work for you they, they're just miserable at the, what they're doing because they never wanted to do it right well put a pitcher in catcher's gear i bet yeah. he won't love that no. i bet he won't do as well at it either yeah. but you put you got to find the right spot and unfortunately employees don't come to us with like you know you you, you hire a pitcher because you know he's you know he's a pitcher right and <laughs> Yeah, you, you can't say, okay, looks looks like here your stats say you are an excellent, you know, material handler. You're hired. No, they don't come in like that. It's actually the opposite. They'll be like, I want to be the material guy. And then they get that position and they hate it. And it's like, I'd rather actually be building fence. And it's like little did you know. Yeah. No, that's that is absolutely it. Or we've got we've got some guys that, you know, they they might not work out on the crew. We've got one guy that, uh, for one reason or another, he wasn't a good fit on the crew. He wants to be a crew leader, but he's not a good fit for the production crew. So what we're in the middle of right now is said, okay, so, and actually he started here out in our lot and in our fabrication shop. Yeah, he's like kind of a material handler, also a fabrication assistant. Um, so we put him back in that role and he's ultimately happier there. And we're also starting up, we're, we're starting up a repair crew as well. So 90% of the time they'll be assisting in fabrication and 10% of the time they'll be running repairs. That's and for him. That's gold. Bill's our repair man. And we love having a repair guy. It makes life so much better. Well, it, the perfect example was Friday at like 11 AM. I get a call from a friend of mine that their fence was cut. And they really needed it. They really needed it fixed by the weekend. I was like, hey, listen, my guys are out for the day. And actually, so this guy and his his assistant were doing, they were doing a big material delivery. So I didn't know if they were going to be back in time. Um, I said, and that's what I told him. I was like, hey, I, my guys are out. But if I can get guys over there, I will. But it might be Tuesday. And he was like, okay, well, obviously, I'd rather be secure for the weekend. But let me know. And then sure enough, these guys rolled back in. The material delivery went smoother. Oh, actually, so we didn't think there was going to be a loader unloader there when we dropped off, and there was. So they were able to get it unloaded pretty quickly. And then we just retasked them. Said, okay, we need grab four foot of six foot nine gauge, and I need you to head over here and get it done. That's that's a nice solution to have in your back pocket. It it gives you so many referrals and reviews, and mm -hmm. for us, it's just been like it's just a headache relief because you know you want to help customers and you can't help them and it gives you that stress and that headache of like how can i help them it almost makes you want to get in your truck and go help them right but now right. you have a solution it's like it's it's right there and you can use and then he like I mean, he does so much more than that but that's his main thing is, is repairs well yeah yeah you you can't do the whole like there's typically not enough repairs to make a full-time position out of especially not for these guys it's two full-time positions um, but we can schedule them to be here on the lot for like Thursdays is when all our deliveries come in or m the majority of our deliveries come in. We just schedule them here on Thursdays, you know, yep. and we can schedule schedules, different things. The thing is like the emergency repairs are the ones that need it the most, you know, that they haven't been waiting six weeks for a fence and they haven't. So they're the ones to your point that you want to help the most because it's an emergency and I, and you like pleasing people. Um, so the other part of this conversation too, is on the business side, the revenue side, they're typically, they typically pay better when, you know, if you compare gross profit, say for the time it takes for the material, it takes, they pay better. Yeah. And then there's less variables. That's my biggest yeah. thing. 
we can eliminate variables like we're doing good so like you don't have to call 811 on most repairs not every repair but right most repairs there's no 811 it's a yeah. smaller contract there's not as much detail there's no project manager going out there yep. we're really limiting like the the amount of work yeah, well, in this example, it was in the majority of what our repair guys do is cut chain link fences, just because I'm sure it's like this everywhere. But there's a, a there's a ring of people running around cutting catalytic converters. So this is one of those places where they cut the fence to get into the cars, got the catalytic converters, and and we're gone. Business needs it right away. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they they needed it right then because they knew it was going to happen again, and they wanted to make it harder for these people to get in. Like you said, there's no eight one one. No project management. I literally said, hey, could you shoot me a couple of pictures so I know what to send the guys with? Yeah, and, and I knew. I, grateful I, for that. It's like people want to give them all your time. And they, they just want it fixed. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, they're not, and they're not getting bids for it either. Yep. You know, and I don't say that to say you take advantage of the situation, but you don't have to send somebody out to look at it. You don't have to do any of that. Send me a couple of pictures. I'll send guys out. And they just, you know, of course, sometimes if it's a company that doesn't know you, they're going to ask for a price and all that. But most of the times they don't ask, you know, and, and you treat them right when you send the bill. So then that's that's the ultimate key to this, right, is when they receive the bill, it's less than what they would have expected for same day emergency, you know, emergency repairs is less than what because there's other industries where you would pay an arm and a leg for an emergency service call. You know, I mean, it's I, Very true. my best friends in HVAC and plumbing. So I'm going to preface this next statement by, by saying that. But typically in those industries or when the same day emergency service calls, it's an extra X dollars simply because it's an emergency. And as a business person, we understand why it costs more. Right. They have to re re, you know, target someone. They've got an upset customer now. They've got to redo stuff like for us, we know the back end. We know that makes sense. But from the customer's point of view, they're just getting charged more because they know they can they can get charged more yep. because it's an emergency. Well, it's our it's I think it's our job as business owners to look out for the customers, and that's what I was saying earlier. That's my biggest thing. Like if I can save the customers money and give them a higher quality fence, I'm gonna do it. I'm not yeah. gonna charge them more money and think that I'm offering higher quality and I deserve more. That's not really where my, my thought process is. It's like, how can I make the customers, you know, if I can run my business for this much and this much and we're making profit and we can grow and it, then why would I need more than what, you know, why do we need all that extra dessert? I don't understand it sometimes. Well, absolutely. So my granddad had a saying that you can give someone a haircut for life or you can scalp them once. Mm-hmm. Like that's literally, that's literally, and I remember that all the time that when, you know, when we're talking about putting a bid out in, in and by these emergency repairs, you yeah. know, could, could we charge more? Probably. And the service is already performed. They didn't ask for a price. Like we could charge more for it, but then that customer is gone. They are absolutely done. They will call somebody else the next time, or you can treat them right. Like, you know, your numbers, you can, you can charge them what you need to charge to make an okay profit and to pay your guys and pay the material and all that. Like it, it can be a win-win. It really can. It always, you always can win. I mean, it's, everyone wants to see the millions in like a day or two, but it's like, if you worry about the pennies, then the millions come. So stop worrying about charging that customer more money. Worry about where you're not efficient and where you need to be efficient. So yeah. like, I just worry about myself more than I worry about this customer owes us more money. And I'm like, no, we could have done that more efficiently. It was our fault, you know, and yeah. it, now make ourselves better. I don't know. I love it. So that's, that's it, a guys. good point. We, we had an, we had a project two weeks ago, three weeks ago, they all kind of blend in, but it took less materials than what we bid. You know, so we use, everyone uses something different. We use job Nimbus and it itemizes out all the materials when we're bidding it so that we're actually bidding it for the materials instead of just by the foot anyway so we knew you know for example that we had bid it for 322 pickets but it actually took like 310 pickets and it took less posts less rails the job shrank a little bit when we actually got on site customers fine with it they signed off on the final walkthrough and all that so we just in the invoicing process it's pretty easy because it also details out all the all the material we just deducted 
the pickets, the rails, the post, the labor, and send them the bill. And then the customer came back and said, well, um, I don't mean to, to argue with you here, but the contract I have was for more. So yeah. are you sure? Are you sure you didn't make a mistake? You said, no, it took less material. It took less time. It was just, it took less, it took less things to make this job go. So it costs less. And if you were in the business of doing more than just fences, he would probably call you to do his, his, his kitchen and do that. Yep. I mean, that's a relationship. Now he's referring you to people 10 years from now. I, I mean, you, you know, he's sitting there at his uncle's wedding and you, Joe Everest is the guy he's talking about. Well, and in, especially in today's day and age, he's also the guy that went on Facebook. Somebody asks, Hey, who does fence? You got to call those arc fence because they were supposed to charge me 5,200. They charged me 5,000 or whatever it was. Uh, these guys are stand up guys and, and you know, they're, they operate with integrity, that sort of thing. And that's what we've, we've been tagged a couple times since then in Facebook posts by him. Um, doing the right thing is always the right thing. Yeah. yeah. Good, Joe do, do what is right. Yeah. Oh, oh he dropped off. Yeah. That was a yeah. mic drop. He had to do what was right. Do what's right. Boom. <laughs> but, you know, and that's the thing is it's always a good idea, right? Good karma is real. It is absolutely real. If you just do what's right all the time, there will be no substitute. Like I used when I first started, because my dad and grandpa, my grandpa, not so much. He did really good work. But my dad was more like about every dollar on the table he could get. So yeah. if someone wanted something extra, he was going to. And I just never really liked that much. I was like, you know, how about we just do this to help you while we're here? You know, you want us to move the dirt in this one pile? Not right. a problem. No, that's not twenty five dollars. We're going to do it and we will love to do it. We'll, we'll do, and you want us to spread it. That's we'll do that, too. That's not a problem. Next time, just try to bring this up. If, if we need for you to build another fence, just bring it up ahead of time so we can plan for it and have our crews ready to go. But we'll yep. make it not a problem, Joe. So, thank you so much. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. My dad would be like, no, that's twenty five dollars. No, right. just to spread it. That's seventy five. Yeah. So, we we're not going to do it for less. And I'm just not that kind of person. Well, uh, well, no, because you know, you know, as a customer, like, can they pay it? Yes, but they're not going to want to. They're not going to enjoy that, no. and they're going to. That's what they're going to remember because that's one of the last interactions you've had with them. Yep. Was they're like, you know, this is nickel and dime, you know. <laughs> so there's an airline that operates. Actually, they operate out everywhere, I guess, but Allegiant, and. Everyone knows, like, you can get a discount airfare, but they will nickel and dime you to death. Yep. Like, you, you want a snack? Be there. That's going to cost. You want this? That's going to cost. That's not a great experience. Yep. I will fly Allegiant if I absolutely have to, but if I've got any other choice, no way. Just because I know that's the experience I'm going to have. It's, it's, I guess that. A lot of business owners have that thought because they are thinking they're doing what's best for the customer because they're like, oh, I'm going to do what's best by saving them every penny I can. But in reality, yeah. you're average for everybody and just have it that, that insurance to where you don't have to worry. Yeah. No, that's absolutely true, too. Is And sometimes you think you're doing what's best for the customer, but it ends up backfiring anyway. Yep. Right. You're, you cut the wrong corner and now all of a sudden that's return trips to make it right. That's. And now the customer is upset because it required return trips yep. when you could have just done it a little bit more from the get go cost a little bit more, but it's done right. That's our biggest thing is just doing it right. Like if a customer wants us to do something that's, you know, out there a little ways, we typically 99% of the time just will tell them it's shoe doesn't really fit. You know, we're, we don't do that right. kind of work. We, we would like to, to take quality in what you do. It, there's not really a discount we can offer you right now. So, you know, mm -hmm. Well, and that comes up for us because we don't do custom like custom wood fences they just aren't our thing we're not great at them so when someone says they want a custom fence we say unfortunately we're not a great fit for that project we just know it up front and then you know it's usually the response is so you don't want my business no i want you to have a great experience absolutely and i i i cannot guarantee that from day one that it will be great will we do our best absolutely but sometimes our best isn't good enough. You know, we just don't excel at that. Yes. And, and then I usually say, you know, that's the reason you can't get a hot dog at McDonald's. Yep. Yeah. Can they cook them? Yeah. They got the stuff. Do they have access to them? I am sure they have access to hot dogs. 
but for whatever reason, it doesn't fit in their process, so they don't offer them. Yep. Unfortunately, we don't offer custom wood fence. Yep. Until it, it fits you, until it makes sense, until you have the right person. I'm sure if you had the right, right. person and then you had this custom guy that you trusted and, and the shoe fit, then you would open up that door. It's not that you don't yeah. want that door, but yeah. for you, it just, it's not in your wheelhouse. It's not in your, you know, what you want to be doing. Absolutely. As a business owner, I do not want to turn away business. Like it is in my best interest to say, yes, you bet we'll do it and we could start tomorrow. Yep. But I know that that's not going to be a great experience for them. Yep. So could we make money on this one project? Yeah. Will, will it lead to more projects later? Nope. Cause it's probably not going to be great, you know? And you know, it, it's, it, and we hold ourselves to a standard too. Right. Could we do an okay job at it? Yeah. But I don't want to do okay work. Well, I don't want my, you, like you said, you, you, you could do a good job. You probably could, you probably, honestly, if you, you all devoted, you could make that custom fence better than anyone else's. But sure. at that point now you don't have, you, when you start switching your guys around and start moving things around, now you're messing up your feng shui and your culture. Yeah. You got to keep your culture good. So you can't just, you know, start doing that. But I'm sure if you wanted to build a custom fence, it's not out of your wheelhouse. It's just not in what your culture is allowing y'all to do. That's what they do. Yeah. Doing custom fences. I'm sure you would have no problem doing that. No. If, if, if we like to your point, if we had people that were great at it and that enjoyed it, we'd start offering it tomorrow. But that's just not, that's not where we're at right now. Now, that could be where we're at next week. I don't know. The right person walks through the door is like, hey, I really don't like building that standard bland fence that everybody else builds. I want to build a cool fence. Okay, let's have a conversation about what that looks like. Um, but you brought up a good point too, Michael, in that you'd also be asking your crew to do something that they don't do every day that they might not be comfortable with. No, no. It is. And it uh, really, really is. Don't take people out of their comfort zones every day. Like if we specialize feel... crews as much as possible. Yep. So I like know... I like the uh, cross training. Don't get me wrong. I love right. Cross right. But there's no need to make someone have to do multiple jobs, wear multiple hats. Right. Right. Yeah. If they're rock stars at wood fence, let them build wood fence. Yep. Cross train them on chain link so they can if you ask them to. If it's once in a while, if it's whatever. Okay. But they really want to build wood fence. Yep. So if they get in a funk because they've been building wood fence and chain link fence and aluminum fence, is that a great experience for them? Probably not. You know, and it might lead to culture issues and you know, an overall happiness. Yeah. That's not to say, like, like you said, our guys are cross trained. So that's not well. So our wood crew this week also built some aluminum fence because it was wood on two sidelines and the returns to the house. But the back, the back line had a great view of like a wooded area with, it was a really nice view. So they wanted aluminum there, four foot aluminum. Yep. Yeah, we can do that. Perfect. So the wood guys built aluminum fence this week. They built a lot of wood, but they built, you know, a hundred foot of aluminum also. Yep. yep. So I, I think that's important though. I think that's important is knowing who is great at what and letting them do that. Yeah. Let, let people be happy. Like, so that's my purpose. Hire a long time. I, I learned that because I, I learned that for myself. A lot of the things I, I learned from watching people, and then some things I learned for myself, like things I don't enjoy doing. And I had to do all right. the, I had to do all the digging the holes, all the yeah. equal maintenance, all of it. And that's what I hated the most about starting a business. Is like my first three years, I hated being in business because I did everything. Yeah. And as soon as I started hiring people that could do things, I started loving it. I was like, man, I enjoy this so much because now I don't have to do that. I never really liked doing that. She loves yeah. it. She does such a good job at it. She's so much better than me. And that's how it goes. It's like they surpass you within like their first week of working with you. And they're yeah. like so good at it. And you're like, I, I see, I knew I wasn't good at that because I didn't like doing it. Well, so that's a fantastic point is that you yeah, you need to do it with your crews, but you need to do that to yourself as well. Uh -huh. You know, you need, if it's something you don't enjoy, ha find somebody that enjoys it. Right. Like yeah. I obviously enjoy marketing and advertising. That's the majority of my day. I like operations too, and I do that. But you gave up your estimating. I mean, and, and yeah. that's hard. Yeah. That's what, one of the hardest things to do is give up the sales part of it. Is the go yeah. and that for me, like once I did that, that's where I became most happy because I like doing the sales. I loved it, but the amount of time it, it takes is that's a full time job. That's fifty hours. Oh, yeah. So it, it is a lot of availability for me. 
Well, it, it, it's availability is right because you have to make yourself available. If there's a question on an email, like my personality is if a question, if there's a problem in my email, I'm going to stop what I'm doing. And I'm going to solve it. It doesn't matter. You know, if it's nine o'clock in the morning or if it's six 30 in the evening, I'm going to try to figure that out. Well, in sales, that's usually what it is. And, and maybe problems isn't the right word. Maybe there's just a question. I'm going to stop what I'm doing. I'm going to answer it. But communicate. But, Important. So it's a problem to you when someone's not communicated thoroughly. That isn't it. And like, that's why you call it a problem because it might not be per se a problem, but to you when something's not communicated correctly or someone's yes. understood or commu it, that is an issue. Bingo. It is. It's either a problem for them or it's a problem for us. Yeah. You know, so we actually are in the middle of solving the communications problem uh, just because, so Sarah handles all of the residential sales, but the sale, we keep growing. Right. And so there's, she only has so much time in the day, even when she works in the evening and she has, there's only so much time in the day. And we have to take her personal mental health into account too. Yes. Like that's a thing. Yep. So we hired a project coordinator to help manage the communication. That's beautiful. You know, to, to answer, because you know, some of the questions that come in are just standard questions. Hey, when, when are you guys going to start my project? Well, click, click, click. Looks like we're going to start, you know, this, you know, just All mundane questions. Or they'll ask you, hey, I, I, I forgot what the vinyl I'm getting looks like. I mean, just stuff like incentive yep. a picture just takes 10 minutes out of your day. So have yeah. it, that's what for us is I have the sales person and then I have the project manager and that project manager, it, it helps so much on the communication to the customer side of mm -hmm. it. Comes to customer, and I learned that from you. I think you said it like while you were here, or maybe another time I picked it up. But you said something about um, people want to feel the attention, like they want to feel like you care. They want yes. to feel they're important. They want to feel like their job isn't just one of a hundred or one of a thousand. That yep. you know they do take pride in you build a thousand fences, so you need to tell them that you build a thousand. But they don't sure. want to feel one in a thousand. They want to feel yeah. like they build a thousand. Yeah, you build a thousand, but theirs is special. Yes. And that's what I learned. And that's important. It's hard. And it's very hard to, to do that because everybody wants to feel special. And there's, there's a lot right. of error. And they want it, they want to feel heard. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's why we hired a position that their primary goal is communication. Let them be heard and acknowledge that they're heard because yep. all, in, in full transparency, our issue was Sarah didn't have enough time in the day to handle the sales and communicate. And so sometimes communications would go a day without yep. being replied to. Well, let me tell you, if somebody feels that they aren't being heard, they will escalate until they are heard. You know what I mean? Like they will, I, I, I compare it to someone in person. Like if I, if I think you haven't heard me, I'm going to speak a little bit louder. So now you put yourselves in the shoe of your form or your pro, your project manager, the guy that's going out there that's installing the fence. Now you yeah. put yourself in his shoes. So now they <laughs> set him up for a bad day. Yes. Now, I try to remember it was like, so like if my salesman doesn't communicate properly and this customer is angry, I have now made my crew are not going to have a good day there because this guy is going to come out and bug them. He's going to, yeah. I mean, and it's going to be terrible for my crew there. So right. if I communicate better, my crew is going to be happier. So now our culture is back to being better. Bingo. Michael, I think this, I think this speaks to what we were saying about you. Where was the comment? I don't know. Uh, yeah, he's crushing it. Because this is the way you think, right? And this, and, and the mentality is everything. If you view it from this mentality, what's good for the customer, what's good for the client, both my internal clients, my, my team members, my external clients, my clients, if you make sure they're both happy, they will in turn return the favor. Yeah, they'll be getting, your guys will be getting, if your communication is better from the office, your guys will start getting tips in the field. How did that happen? How did my guys start getting tips because we did better communication? How did yeah. that make sense? Well, that and that's crazy. I had that thought one time. I was like, there were never tips when I was on the installation crew. Where did this concept come from? Um, but it's just their dude. They had their a team in general is doing an incredible job. And the crew did a good job. And the crew took, yeah. I mean, that's one of the things with our crews that doesn't happen every time. I'm not going to say we're perfect, but what we try to take the most pride in is like clean up, like clean yeah. up super important like if you have a footprint on their driveway make sure it's washed off it's gotta like, go 
got to be cleaned up. And that's before the project manager comes and walks with the customer. That's like as the crew's leaving. So they've worn out. They worked a 10-hour day, 12-hour day or whatever it is in the hot humidity, 110-degree index. And they're still worried about that. And that's so impressive because I remember when I was installing fences, I would be so ready to hop in the truck and leave. Like I would forget about a lot of things like that. Right. And they, they take pride in that. And that, it makes me so happy. They'll take pictures and, and they'll have the whole truck full of dirt. And be like, we took it all away. And I'd be like, I would have hid that dirt. <laughs> like I would have packed it in the post as hard as I could. I would have done something. But they'll, yeah. they'll work yeah. two hours extra to make sure it's a beautiful job. Well, and, and again, Michael, I think that speaks to your culture. That you've got the right people in the right places that think that way. They love it, man. They love you know, it. We're happy. It makes all the difference in the world. Sean King, I see him patiently waiting to come back up. Sean, are you with us? Yeah, he already flew in land. Even not. Yeah, it, that was a quick flight. Well, we'll we'll wait to see if he comes back. Because so uh, for for us that are on this program, we see like down there, we see a list of people that are like waiting to come into the room or waiting to come up on screen. And so I've watched him walk through the airport, get in his car. I was like, but we were on it. We we're in the middle of a conversation. So I'll, I'll give it a little bit and wait, but he's been patiently waiting while, while we wait for him to come back, let's say hi to a few people. So this is, this is when we were talking about the, how we as presenters learn just as much as the attendees. And that's true. When you teach something, you learn it twice. You have to learn it in a different way to teach it. I don't know if that makes sense, but you just have to, you have to, you have to understand it differently. Like I can have operational knowledge of something, but if I can't teach it, I don't fully understand it. A hundred percent. And that's where I'm at is I'm, I'm getting the part where I, I'm teaching a lot of things and I'm starting to realize why I do the things I do. Like uh -huh. I never realized like why I do things. And now I'm like, Oh, it's because of the snowball effect. Like that's why you did this because it actually 10 days later affected you. Yeah. It led to something further down that you hadn't originally taken into account. Yeah. So, one one of the nuggets, I don't even know. Maybe it maybe it was the, that surgeon thing, but uh, teachbacks. So when our crew chief crew chief teaches a new skill to their second, so hanging gates or something like that, that second cannot say that they have they have mastered it or they have proficiency until they teach it back to the crew chief. So not only do you need to understand it and get it together, you need to teach me how to do it. That's awesome. Because it's that other way of thinking. Like to your point was you have to, you just, you think about it differently. You have a different perspective it, of it. Let's do the hinges. Let's do the hinges. We're using this impact and we're not pre-drilling them. You right. don't think about that until you actually do the pre-drilling and you do it like that process. Like if you just watch someone do it and they use a pre-drill and then they use the drill, most people will never pick up the pre-drill. They just pick up the impact and bolt them right in because they don't think about why. And then they right. see the cracks and then all that happens and then so like it's the teach back process if you do the drilling and it, it actually teaches them why they're like uh -huh. oh so this is coming out and that's why i needed because not everybody most people think like that everyone's built something with their grandpa but most of these guys we're hiring no. they don't know why you're pre-drilling a hole they don't they don't understand it and they really need to get that understanding so they need they need to teach it back to you and show you why they're doing it yep yep it just makes sure that they truly understand the concept yeah, Absolutely. I think that's it's so important. I mean, you really don't know something until you teach it back. Exactly, exactly. So those of you watching, golden nugget for today, have your team teach back a skill that you teach them. Tony Thornton, keep it up, guys. Well done. High praise from, a, from an important guy. So Tony Thornton, for those of you that don't know, executive director of the American Fence Association. Happy to have Tony with us today. Oh, let's see. I see movement on the screen. Sean, how are you? What's up, guys? He's landed. You have returned. How that was the works. flight? Uh, flight was easy. I feel like it was I've a quick one across the country. Yeah, it was the second leg on Charlotte to yeah. uh, Evansville. I listened to you guys most of this, uh, as much as I could. I just couldn't participate and talk. <laughs> yeah, great content. Yeah. Pre appreciate that. Good appreciate job. that for sure. So, Sean, yep. the, I, I would like to get your your input or, or your uh, perspective on the issue. So, what we're talking about is is teach backs. Um, so what I mean is, so you understand something more when you teach it. This all started oh, when sure. I said that we, that we, the presenters learn just as much as the attendees, 
because we have to teach it. And to teach it, you have to understand it fully. And so you really got to understand the content, right? And I learned this lesson in uh, law enforcement. So oh, yeah. you go through the academy and then you get on the road and then you got someone teaching you and you got to learn all these skills and follow all these rules and do all this stuff perfect. Um, I muddled my way through it, but when I became an instructor where I had to teach other deputies, um, man, you really work on the finite pieces because uh, it's more difficult to teach it back than it is to do the job to begin with. So yep. that kind of struck with me like, huh, that's interesting. Uh, I really know the content very well. So coming back, back to us at Mr. Fence, we now make some of our team members teach back some of the things that, uh, that normally I'd teach. I was like, you know what? Uh, today, uh, you know, Jeremy, you're going to teach uh, how to dig a hole properly in the proper depth. And then you listen to them explain to it how, how, which, why, why. And it sounds like me with a little bit of different twist. Um, sure. And then we can dive in and say, well, no, what we really mean by that is X, Y, Z. And so now yeah. we've really dove into He almost had it, but when he's reteaching it, that's really what he knows. Does that make well, sense? The the biggest the biggest deal is when and a question gets asked. Well, why'd you do it this way? Well, just because that's the way it works. Because that's the way right. that you have to do it. Oh, okay. So let me explain that better. Right. We act. Here's the reason why. And you yep. know, because also when I'm teaching it, I might not give all of it. They said hi, you Heather. Know. Hi. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right, Joe. It's absolutely right. You can find uh, gaps. You really can find knowledge. out what they know. Right. When they reteach it, they do, if you just regurgitate it, they nod their head yes, they take a test. I, <laughs> you really don't know how much they know until they have to re explain it in their own words. That's right. Yep. Love Absolutely. It. I'm learning that so much now. I mean, it's like that in the past eight months. Very just, bad. Y'all guys have learned so many details like that that, that has helped, helped me excel and do things the right way. So it's like things like I never thought of that. <laughs> understand it and they realize it. they don't see how important it is put it and show them and i mean it just in the past eight months that we have going on or mostly due to john king joe everest caleb roth just different people that have just gave us these little clues that are like that is important yeah oh we lost sean but you know and that's absolutely and we all learn from each other you know, that's, that's the thing is, you know, from visiting your operation, like I picked up tidbits, like we we're talking about how to track time. Well, that, that came from you, you know what I mean? And so we all, we we're all learning, you know, no matter like what stage of business we're in, we're all still learning. We're all still figuring stuff out. It never gets easier. No, 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 it doesn't. You know, there was a question that came up in one of the fence groups the other day that um so oh it's about payments about commercial someone was saying hey what do you do when you can't get paid for 60 days and i had made a comment I was like hey we're we're in the middle of a mid six figure project the biggest one in our company history and i did we had to negotiate pay draws right. like hey this is how we operate we'll need you know a, a, and we structured it with like we get paid 25 percent on purchase order 25 percent when materials show up 25% when we're halfway done and then 25% when we're done. And, and when we presented it, we're like, Hey, and, and we understand if this doesn't meet your process, but it's what, it's what we need as a business to, to keep running. And then we negotiated right. terms on that and all that. Um, but no, so the question that came up though was, so do you bid those projects with, with less profit? Do the bigger projects have less profit? No. No, they all have the same profit percentage. Not you know, not profit amount, but profit percentage. Bigger projects just have bigger problems. Yeah. Right. And bigger, it's like that with risk. business too. You you never you never don't have problems. Like there are never <laughs> no problems. The problems are just different. Yep. And sometimes yeah. they're bigger problems. You know, it's Bro, if you don't solve them, someone said that. I think I was Sean. Don't solve them when you're small, then you get big, you just got more problems. Yeah. You should have a bigger problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, Money it's, doesn't yeah. solve those problems. So I guess, hey, well, if I just sell more fence, or if I just put more fence in the ground, it'll fix these problems. The only thing that does is make the problem louder. Yep. Bigger. Right. Or I get people say, well, I'll work on that part of my business when I get big enough that it matters. 
I said, well, really, right now you have one team member. Now's the best time to get all your process procedures in place now. I know it may seem redundant and extra and not worth it. But when you grow, you won't stop to figure out the process of procedures because you're too busy. Yeah. Now is the time to do it while you actually have a little more time than you think. You think you're busy now. Wait till you try doing, you know, five irons in a fire at one time. Yeah. <laughs> I had a business coach and he broke it down. So we were talking about job duties and job roles and all that. And he was, and it came up to like uh, accounting. So accounts receivable payable. And I was like, Oh, well I do that. Well, you still need a job description for that. He's like, well, I just do it. He's like, yes, but what happens when you don't, right? You have to know yeah. what you do to, to hand it off. So yep. you need to have a job description and a job duties, and you need to have a, a process documented. Now, you know that you do it, so you're not going to have to go refer to the process, but you need to have it so that when you're ready to hand it off, it's sent, you don't have to figure it out then. When you're under pressure, you already have somebody hired. You already There's already yep. some expectations going. It's a lot nicer to hand them the packet and say, this is based on my knowledge and my understanding of doing this task these are the job duties, the process, and all that. Um, which, which is your point, Sean? Now is the best time yep. to figure it out. Don't kick that can down the road into the future. The best time to do it is when it's you and a couple guys. It really right. is for sure, for sure. Hard, hard thing right. to get across, though. It is. It's hard to understand because you're like, why I do this? Why do I need to sit down and take time to document it? I mean, I just do it anyway. It's a waste of time. Well, it will take you longer later. I. Absolutely sure. promise that. So this was Sarah's response to the announcement. So sorry, Sean, while you're on the flight, we announced the winners of the uh, who, what, when, where, why challenge uh, was Chattahoochee fence and map fence. Awesome. So Sarah said, how excited. Congratulations, you guys. Support. Yeah, huge congratulations. And one thing I had said was like, this wasn't an easy decision. Like these were no. all good entries, you know, and it's, it's not to say other events haven't had good entries, but, in other events, it was um, a, a more clear choice, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. No. No, it was very hard. It it was. Yeah. They were all very good. So Sarah's Sarah's experience is it helped their business so much. Each day we're getting more views, and the interaction with friends and customers is amazing. That and that's what we're trying to do with five videos. Is it's enough videos to where people are starting to view them. You're getting more comfortable with them, and hopefully, five days someone has said. Hey, great video. I saw that right. what video and that what video, like you guys did a great job. And hopefully they Good. continue. Now, now they got this uh, momentum going. They got the confidence under their belt. Hell, they just won the contest. You got to do good at it. So now show us the entire journey. Like everyone in your community wants to see you guys grow and thrive. Everybody does. So new building, new company, new team members, spotlight them, show them off. Like, yeah, use that momentum. Absolutely. Go for it. And that's and yeah, and that's one of the things we discussed there at, at the event is like the who, what, when, where, why, then answer questions. And then to your you showed everyone the great rock star videos you do of your team. Like highlight right. your team members because that's a win win. It's a twofer, right? It's, it's a twofer. So quick story. In in Key West, we were walking the boardwalk and somebody recognized me. And they're like, hey. <laughs> You're from the Tri-State. What's up, Tri-State? Biggest fence geek. Exactly what he said. I'm like, whoa. He says, we watch all your videos. This is in the very tip, southernmost point in the freaking United States. <laughs> and somebody recognized me from my videos back home in Evansville, right? And it happened cool. one more time on the trip. Somebody else said, you're that fence guy. Yeah. <laughs> I am. Yeah. So it, it'll yeah. work. So they, you know, they travel. That was pretty cool. Catch up on comments. So Ed Duffield said he did. He built about 240 foot of fence himself around the yard. Thanks to thanks to us. Great tips were critical. Three single gate or gate tips were critical. Three single gates, 10 foot double gate finished about six weeks ago. Oh, so this is when we we're talking about some questions that get old. When to stain the fence? Too late. He goes on to say treat it's treated fine. Six weeks ago. Two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Six weeks right. ago. Well, with treated pine, sometimes you got to let that stuff age a little bit. I mean, the, the answer is when it's below 13% moisture content. And, right? and so that's a technical answer, but if somebody, here's the thing, a thought, think about. That's like the most ideal time to stains for the performance of the same, right? Like 13% or lower, 
means yeah. your stain is going to perform the best. But what happens if the boards warp, crack, shrink, split, deteriorate, start rotting before you get the 13%? What's yeah. more important, the longevity of the stain to be maximized or for you to get some protection on it before the board goes to crap? Because we know once it happens, it doesn't undo. So That's I not- challenge people to say maybe you're better off staining a little early and not get the life expectancy out of it because that's what the weather did to you and you wouldn't dry off fast enough then waiting too long and now it's ruined that's been a thought on my my mind at night i've been thinking about how we can clear coat all of our lumber that goes out because it's penetrating oil you can you can clear coat it and then stain it still two weeks later once it gets to 13 percent and, and be good how can we make it to where yeah. everything that goes out of our door to be different i've been trying in yeah. my head to back that one i don't know if i'll ever figure it out or make well, it then work. dip it do like Joe does and dip it. Well, dip it all in clear and then I mean make yourself different. Yeah, I'll, I'll say this: you do you do need to watch moisture content only because we're going back to restain about nine hundred foot of boards, well, of fence that we had pre-stained when the boards were apparently too wet. This was before we were testing. That's now we'll test five points in a bundle before we stain. Then we were we kept them in a shop. So we assumed like, hey, these things are dry. They've been in the shop for like a week, <laughs> ran them through. And this is also when we were, we, this is prior to the dip tank, we were using a machine. So that might've been part of the problem too. Um, but, you know, going back to restain 900 feet of fence makes you uh, makes you consider the process a little bit. Um, yeah, so uh, that's, that's my only caveat on watch moisture content. Uh, yep. So this was fence that we, we pre-stained a year and a half ago. And the and so what happens is the stain ends up looking blotchy. So mm-hmm. parts of the board that were still a little bit more wet than others don't hold as much stain. I mean, water and oil obviously don't yep. mix. So with the waters there first, the oil will push water out to a certain extent, but if there's more water in it than oil, it's not going to just pressurize and, and force the water out. So just something to think about when we're talking about moisture content. Um, we found some of these bundles of boards we have to keep inside for about a month or so until they reach a low enough moisture content to, to dip, to pre-stain. Mm. But it's usually the middle of the bundle. The middle of the bundle is what gives you the most problems. It's not getting mm. a lot of airflow. Uh, it's the moisture. It's wicking moisture from outside in also. I mean, you can think of a bundle like a big tree. It's going to wick all that moisture in. Have you talked to Dan Wheeler yet with River City Fence? I have not. I have not. He's on my list. He's he, on my list. As soon as they get their lumber, they take every one apart, every bundle they get from Master Helco and Alta Pickets and all that, and they take everything apart, and then they put runners between every one. They don't pre-stain or anything, but they dry all their lumber before they take it to the field, so that way it doesn't warp. And they, they bundle it all back together after they do that, and his stuff— his fences are so beautiful and dry when he puts them up because he does that. And that he gets you guys guys to do that during their free time. Like the time they're not doing anything. Like it's like he doesn't, hmm. he said his overhead hadn't gone up because of it. Hmm. But they've been That's doing interesting. I like that. Especially when we're talking about pre stain. I mean, I, I, I can understand the benefits for just fence installation. Yeah. I mean, that way the boards are dry before they go out. Because I mean, that's, that's what warping and twisting is, right? So it's one part of the board that is drying before another part of the board. It's like yep. a sponge. When a sponge dries, the first part of that sponge that dries, it will cup to that direction or it'll warp yep. to that direction on, on a fence picket. Um, so if you can get remember, them dry evenly. I remember bundles of pickets back in the day when I was a teenager, young teenager, they had stickers every five boards in, in those bundles growing up. Yep. We used to play swords. It used to be the warehouse full of these pallets and so those little stickers those little bitty strips would be everywhere little bitty strips uh like three eighths inch thick and they would put them between every five boards i don't know why the suppliers don't go back to that with these wet bundles that we have now it wouldn't be that terrible for them to do it up front so does he store those inside then michael after they do that they're all stored inside and they have a fan i believe running on them yeah that makes sense for airflow it'd be having it i don't know I, my first inclination was that's going to take a lot of space, but then I don't know that it is. Um, no, it really yeah. doesn't. He's seen a lot of videos on Facebook, and I mean, he, he's got an efficient process. It's really, yeah. it's really his he's efficiency to the max. Like he worked for John Deere for like ten years, and he's big on efficient. I mean, he's he's 
If you saw his organization skills are crazy. Yeah, I believe it. Mm. I believe like, that. John's organization is crazy too. That's interesting. Well, no, I mean, that's the thing, right? Is that's, I, we keep coming back to this, but like these processes can work in any business, but we have to modify them. Right. And just because one business looks like they have everything together, they're still working on things. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know who the biggest fence company in the world is, but they probably got some things to work on. Probably long fence. Yeah. Maybe. I I don't know who the biggest. That's a good question. I wonder who. There, there's, be. there's a guy out out in California, and I want to say, I'm going to get this wrong, but I want to say he's something like 40 million a year. That's long fence. Hurricane around us is like over 200. Hercules is over no 100, and Long's well over 500 million. Million they, a year. They they go to Maryland. You got to remember this is this is the East Coast. Like where we're at, so jam full of people. It's not yeah. Fun. But they go from like Atlanta, Georgia, all the way to Maryland and do all the highway fences, all the prisons, all the, you know, just everything. And all three of these companies just fight between it, all three of them. And they, they've all started and stole people from each other. That's the craziest yeah. part. Her, Her, Hercules is the oldest one. They started in the 50, then Long Fence, and then Hurricane. And Hurricane was started by an employee from Hurricane or Her, Her, Hercules. He didn't like working there no more. So in 94, he started. Then stole people from other companies and now there's six owners in this one and i mean they're just huge man they just run the whole town i my brain is having a hard time comprehending half a billion dollars a year okay listen to this one <laughs> my my um my babysitter <laughs> works for ap department my um i have like five different family friends that work for them like it's crazy like they'll post someone on their thing like and i'm like that's my friend <laughs> they work for me and it's like what? It's crazy, man. Bigger, bigger companies are bigger problems. So, like, it's just magnitudes of scale. Like, can you imagine their payroll? No. Like, hmm. their crews don't leave the lot when they load up. They start loading at five in the morning, and their last crew doesn't leave the lot till around three o'clock. God. I'm, right. I'm gonna do. Crazy. I'm gonna see if my calculator goes that big. It does. Uh, point three. That means their payroll is around a hundred probably roughly 150 million a year probably yeah you're probably divided by 12 you're probably right yeah 12 five a month million that's crazy interesting but <laughs> i think the, the way they've always grown is that you got to remember they sub out every like every yeah. sub their in-house employees might be 100 and then their subs might be 500 subs you know i mean it's, it's a crazy amount of subs Oh, that's nuts. All right, let's get through the comments because I know some people have been waiting for a while. Um, Divine Fence, welcome. Noah, Divine Fence. What's going on, Joe and Caleb? Well, unfortunately, Caleb's not with us, but Sean's with us now. I met uh, Noah. I met him but, in Tennessee at the convention we had. Very nice, very nice. So, uh, Dirt Bike Rider says, how many commercial crews do you have? Do you guys do commercial, Michael? Zero. And Sean, you guys do a little bit of commercial, right? Just just a little bit. Like you guys were talking earlier, it's uh, we can do it, but it's not really what we're good at. So it's hard yeah. for us to make great money at it. In terms of projects, like number of projects, we're probably 50-50 on commercial residential. Now, in terms of revenue, there's more commercial and residential just because they're bigger projects. All right. You know, just more revenue. But... Uh, how many commercial? So here's a here's the interesting thing about our commercial crews. So uh, they're actually all family. So they're subcontractors, partners. They and so it's a, a dad, his two sons, and then uh, they've got more family that gets involved. So we're in the middle of that five figure project, and it's a dad and sons, but it's also uncles and cousins. There's a couple of wives involved in that build, so they can scale up and down depending on. You know, how big they need to be so how many crews typically two you know if is usually kind of where they're at the dad the sons the uncle his son are kind of two of our crews but then they can scale up as needed which is kind of nice roger ben course a dang missed most of it hello everyone and this comment was like let's see it's about an hour and a half ago so you actually did miss most of it you've been here for most of it <laughs> Will H, we have two guys that do nothing but gate repair. They average three to four a day, huge revenue stream. I can see wow. that. 
how did they gate repair? How they three to four a day? Yeah, it's that's a large competition in the area to be getting that many gate. Yeah, well, and it's that it's probably guys who just have their process down pat. You that's know what awesome. I mean? Like they figured it out. Like that would be interesting to hear how that works for sure. Yeah, I would be like, very agreed. I know it's possible. I just I, yeah. For me, it's like we might get one gate repair a month. We most of ours are like limbs fell on a fence, dogs beat up a fence, you know, lawnmower with rotary tillers, something. Like that. Yeah, agreed, agreed, agreed. Yeah, that would be interesting, Will, to hear about it. I'm not doubting it for a minute. I would, I'm interested to hear what that process looks like. Probably has a really good marketing, you know, video yeah. like how you I mean you could come up with a video and you know have you know this is how we rebuild your gates and but yep. and I mean. That would be awesome to post about that. Well, so the the best video for that would be for a homeowner how to repair your gate. Okay. And then we would document the whole thing. Here's what you start. Here's your first step. Here's the second step. We document the whole thing. Here's how you can do it. We actually sell the supplies here. We can sell you everything you need to repair this gate. No problem. I like that wow. idea. And then that will ultimately end up with more gate repairs for us. Yeah. Like it. Because what it does is it's not a sales video, so people feel more comfortable watching it. Okay. But it's also proving to them that you have the knowledge and the process to do it correctly. I like that. So I stole that from Gary Vaynerchuk. He's like he's the guy that says that because he runs an ad agency, right? A marketing agency. Vayner Media is massive. Like they they have they have like Mercedes and those type of clients. Anyway. Um, but his thing, so, but he teaches people like he has people that does that do all that. He just teaches people marketing and media and that sort of stuff. And so people, people always ask him like, listen, why are you doing this when you do this as a service? Like, aren't you taking business away from yourself? He said, absolutely not. I could pay someone or I could show someone a video on how to use a screwdriver and they would pay me to use it Yeah, because yeah. for all the reasons, because I show them that I know exactly how to do it. I have a process for it. I have a whole thing. And when I, when you hire me to do it, you know you're getting it done right. Yep. But I, you're also providing a service of if somebody can't hire you to do it, well, now you've also helped them by documenting the steps. Yep. You know, and maybe next time they need something done, they hire you or whatever else. And so as this as this fence guy says, this, this Mr. Fence says, it's a twofer. Yeah, I think it's a twofer. They might not get your service, but they're probably sharing that video to somebody else. So of course. Now, boom, you've won. So they're sharing to some of that money. So now my brain's working. We need to do a video on how to repair cut fence. Okay. Yep. And that's what we need to do next week now. Because that's, like I said, we've got, so Sean, we've got two guys that are in our lot. We bought uh, an Isuzu flatbed truck to do material deliveries and repairs out of. Um, and so that's what we've been sending them on is all the cut fences. Like it's literally two or three a day. So it's kind of like what this guy wow. says about gates for us. It's cut fences. Uh, um, that's a lot. People are cutting chain link to get it. Catalytic converters. I like guess a really, it's a big deal. What hmm. about swapping out posts? Are your repair guys doing that? No, they're not swapping posts out. Just like minimum. So that's how we try to keep it. Like if it gets into posts, we try to sell like a full repair. Yeah. Like, right. You know, like a full, like redo 50 feet of it. Yep. Yep. And that's well, and usually what we do is we'll try to we'll we'll steer the conversation towards replacement yeah because the idea being is mr customer if you've got these four posts that are rotted enough to where this fence is leaning the other posts were installed at the same time they were likely they have the same treatment in them you're probably not far away so would you rather pay me to come repair this fence and then next year pay me to repair more of it and then on and on when the materials are getting more expensive and labor is getting more expensive or would you rather ultimately save more money on the project and have us just replace it today? I love it. That's usually how that conversation goes. So to your earlier point, I didn't realize it, but really what we're doing is we're focusing these guys on stuff where we don't have to call in utility locates. Okay. That's, like how that, that's not how I had viewed it before, but after hearing you say that, I was like, you know what? Yeah, that's exactly what we're prioritizing them for easy one day stuff that takes minimal office assistance and less variables keeping the variables yep. minimum you know you know getting a picture from a client you know what you yep. need to do. you don't have an estimator you don't have the human error there no they you know and the truck truck has handful of fittings 
It has four foot eleven and a half. It has six foot eleven and a half, eleven and nine gauge on it. That's what you need, and to end ties and assorted fittings like that. But yeah, you're right. You're taking variables out of it. But and we get pictures. Like the pictures always help. Say, so, hey, could you could you take snap a couple, text them to us, email them to us, whatever, and then we forward that to the guys. So now the guys know what they're getting into before they even get there. I they love know it. where it is. They know what it is. That's what company cam is. Since I started doing Bingo. that, on I mean, company cam has killed it for us. I mean, I yeah. can't. I can't even imagine how we even ran a business before using <laughs> and, and we keep finding uses for it. I mean, it's, and it's crazy. It's like, I mean, everyone for my team, it's just, they all like, at first they didn't, I mean, I, I brought company camp for like six months and then finally started using it two months ago. Uh -huh. I mean, and push, uh -huh. push and they're like, no, no, no. And they finally start using it. Everyone can't believe they didn't use it before. So it's funny you say that I was the only user on company cam for like a year. Uh -huh. Like I've, we've had it for a while and I was the only person using it. And then I was like, you know what? I told I told my sister Sarah that on sales. And I told Scott that does the installation. I was like, you two both get on board on company cam because you can share pictures real time, and we keep them. And da da da. I tell you what, I'm excited about on company cam. So I saw a new feature pop up in there that's not active yet. It's checklists. Okay. That's what I'm interested in. Is have a default checklist. I I want one picture of the fence sign on the fence. I want a picture of the our yard sign in the yard. I want this, that, and the other. So they can be snapping pictures, check it off the list. Snap a picture, check it off. So that every every fence is documented the same. I love it. So it, and it just that it's just gets out that human error, cuts all that part out of it. That's right. That's right. Oh, we got a question for you. Well, I don't know what I'm not sure what that says. I apologize. But he goes on to ask a question. What is the guy in the pink shirt? What is the pink shirt guy's name? Michael Davis. Michael With Davis. Chesterfield, Chesterfield. Chesterfield Fence. Chesterfield Fence. Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, Richmond, Virginia. Is that a pink shirt? I believe Which, it is pink. Yeah. Okay. I was. <laughs> I couldn't. I don't know what that. I mean, some yeah, kind. Of, I didn't even realize. I figured it was just like an off-white shirt, and the you know, because color on video gets weird sometimes. Yeah. Oh well, never mind. Roger already got it. All right. Thank you, Roger, for being on the ball. Roger. Roger's the man. Like, he's in all of the fence guys' videos. He's the man. He's paying attention. That's what it takes. So the, so Will, so Will's the guy that does three or four gates a day, or four or five gates a day. We use an automated software that sends updates to the customer in text and picture form. Uh, we have very few customers that feel neglected. I love it. The more you can automate, the better. Yeah, yeah the more sure. you can automate, the better. So the nice thing about company cam, too, so we're trying to figure out what the process looks like, um, but with the invoice, send them two, three, four pictures of their completed project. You know what I mean? So who was it? It was at your event. Oh, man, who was it? I was talking to somebody that does this. So that with the invoice, they send three or four pictures of the completed project, including one from the road of the house and then the fence on both sides if it's there. Um and he said, you know what's funny? He said, more people share those photos on their social than you would think. Wow. Really? Like, I, you should put a watermark I on think the about photo. Wow. I know. That's a this great. is what I'm talking about. At these events, it's golden nuggets like this. And this was just a Will conversation Burrow. that I yeah. had in passing with somebody. Matthew Munson says, the training event was amazing. I can't express how valuable it was and how much we learned from attending. Extremely grateful for all the attendees and coaches. I feel like we're all a part of an even bigger family now. And I hope we can all stay in touch and continue to help each other throughout our journeys. I hope to see everyone in Nashville. Couldn't agree more. Like, there's a reason we call it the Fence Fam. Right? Yeah. Like, it really, really is. And the sooner we can all get on board with that, us all being in the same community, no matter if it's in our community or whether it's outside of our community, the better. I mean, it's guys, think how, okay. So at these events, everyone's having conversations, everyone's friendly, everyone's trying to help each other. Right. And then we go back to our communities. And for whatever reason, we revert back to us first them, us first them. Right. Like imagine you could have that kind of interaction on a daily basis in, in your own market. I think that'd right. be amazing. I really do. Well, Michael, Michael, you had one of your, I'll use air quotes, competitors at the event. Yeah. He just, I just uh, sold him 700 feet of aluminum that he's picking up on Tuesday. 
Nice. So nice. Work together. He couldn't get no one in Virginia can get aluminum right now. We had a couple of truckloads come in that we've been stockpiling for our own inventory that we don't really sell much to the public. And he asked if I had some and we made it work. Absolutely. That's what it's about. That is absolutely what it's about. Sean King's number one says Tristan. Concur. Ideal Fencing says, where do I get more info on attending the October event? So we'll be pushing out more uh, when we really finalize, like, who's going to be there and what they're doing. Uh, because, so, Sean, one year on the flight, I talked about that I was supposed to reach out to everyone this week about the event in October. But then half of our office staff was out this week for one had a vacation, one had an illness, and the other one, uh, she got run off the her her and her motorcycle got ran off the road. So she she's fine, but she's healing from that. So I didn't get that done, and I apologize. But more information to be coming. Uh, okay, okay. So this is the four or five gate repairs. Cedar fence gates. We have the Z frame cut already. Upper and lower two by fours are long and cut on site. New install, new pickets, and off to the next one. A few need the posts removed. Okay. So this is, so they're not doing any, okay, so this is kind of getting back to the whole no utilities thing, right? So that makes sense how they can do several a day. If the posts are good, the posts are solid, really they're reframing, repicketing. Sounds solid. That's what I mean. Like if you could find a process and figure out how to document the process and make it efficient, like I guarantee you, when Will's guys show up, they know exactly what they're there to do. You know what I mean? They've got the material, they've got the process. Four isn't it four to five a day? I think. You, let me scroll back up. Three, yeah. three or four a day. Three or four gates a day. That's huge. And now he's got guys that stay. He, you know, stay busy, and an additional revenue stream for the customer, and, and that makes or for the company. Um, that makes sense because if you think about it. The reason we do steel frames on steel posts is because the number one callback on fences is the gates or are the gates, right? Like that's the number one problem people have. They sag, they drag, they warp, they twist, they just, they just don't operate like gates should operate. Uh, and that's really the selling point. The reason that sound pretty well rehearsed is because that is our selling point when we're talking about steel gates. I would say, hey, you know, Mr. Miss Customer, it's the number one callback. And they sag, they drag, they warp, they twist. Have you had a fence before? How did the gates work? Like they were awful. They had drug the ground to pick them up, to open them. And like, man, that doesn't sound like how a gate should act, huh? Like you just, how about you have a gate that just works like a gate? Like I would love that. What do you charge like roughly for, a, a if you didn't do a metal gate to, if you did, like what's the upcharge yeah. for metal? So, so let's say this. So talking about prices in a open form like this isn't legal, but we can talk about price ranges. Yeah. Right. So this isn't us comparing prices or setting prices. This is us just saying the price range of what this would be in my market for my company. Um, a single gate would range from anywhere between three and $400. Yeah, that's uh, a dope market roughly. I, I think everywhere I've talked to the markets for the metal is, you know, it's just the frame. It's not yeah. like labor additional. You're, you know, once you get the system down, you have a bunch of frames. You don't, yeah. you not custom making one for each gate. You have them on the truck ready to go. Exactly. That's it. That's that's our winter work is stockpiling six foot tall, four foot wide gates, six foot tall, five foot wide gates, four by fours, four by fives. And then we just start stacking them to the sky. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's galvanized steel. It's, but it's not costing you a ton in overhead. You know, it's no. the benefit to your customers, you know, a couple hundred dollars more, maybe, you know, just well, matter how big it is. And if I stock, you know, the gates we used this summer, we built last winter at last winter steel prices. So okay. we probably ended up saving. That's so awesome. Now we're going to offset that when we buy more steel for this winter. Um, but it ultimately is probably a cost savings to some extent. Yeah. I was just thinking it, it, you, what would be someone's point of not do offering it. I mean, well, you know, why would it hurt them? It's not a huge money. You know, you're in the hundreds of dollars. It's not like someone spending $2,000 more for. No, 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 no. Well, and the thing too is, you know, we, we spend time talking about finance and talking about gross profit percentage, right? Knowing your numbers and, and I like a 50% gross profit. I like to aim for 50%. Sometimes it's 45, I like to aim for 50. 50% of a larger number is equals a larger number, right? So it ultimately leads to more profit for the business too. It's a better experience for the client because a year, two years down the road, 
They're not dragging their gate. They're not picking it up. I mean, these things, when they shut, like they shut sturdy. Yeah. A wood gate just kind of, it wobbles a little bit because, because of the nature of the product. Right. And um, is it metal post or is yeah. it with metal post as well? Yeah. Metal post two and a half inch CS 40 post. Cause yeah, that's, that's a really good deal. Cause in our market, I, I think guys are going more in the, the sevens to a thousands when you get into getting, you know, the steel post with, with the hardware like that, because it, it does become more of a skilled talent to make that look beautiful. It's not, well, it does. It's not you, you can't just go out there and build a frame like that and, and, and match the fence. No. You have to be skilled. Well, it it works. It works in a lot of different ways. So you know, it's good for the customer. It's a better experience for them long term. Um, and also for us, like I said, it's winter work. So for us, so if if the school district is closed for weather, we don't send crews out. We don't send any trucks out. The rationalization being, if the school district doesn't feel comfortable putting kids in a bus and putting it on the street i don't want to put their parents in a truck and send them down the street right like it just makes sense but everybody's got bills that mortgage comes every month the rent comes every month so does the light bill so we try to find winter work right whether it's pre-staining pickets ahead of time whether it's building steel frames like we find winter work and it's not busy work either like no one no one likes charity so this is not charity this is us doing work yeah. But we're just working ahead for next year. You know what I mean? Like it just it works for everybody. How cold is it going to be in your event you're hosting? In October, it's not. It's not too cold in October. Sixties and seventies. Sixties and seventies. Yeah, That's yeah, it's not going to be cold at all. That was one of the considerations that we had. We're like, well, we're getting to late October, but so like how Hall so Halloween's kind of how I gauge late October. Uh, well, it, Halloween's literally a couple days after the event. Uh, it's been everything from shorts and t-shirts. Sometimes it's cool. I mean, sometimes we'll get an early cold snap. But we had a really late cold snap this year, so I'm hoping that means late cold snap for the winter. Um, but yeah, usually it's usually it's it you it's usually jeans and a t-shirt. You know, what I mean, it's not shorts weather, but it's also not putting on a heavy jacket either. I'm already got my long pants on. <laughs> it's like barely in the seven it's like 79 outside and i'm like yes thank you oh no man i, I, I tell you what you you get uh let's see it's I'll, I'll tell you i'm wearing shorts right now let me see what the weather is outside so weather here is currently i'm gonna guess high 70s let's see apparently it takes a little bit to load um 83 so 83. yeah it's good shorts weather good shorts weather but no yeah so it won't be bad the weather won't be bad awesome so will goes on to talk about this like i am super interested in this so he charges oh let's bring sean back there you are sir welcome back what's up guys i've been listening no 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 you're fine. Did. Ah, that's gonna happen after a trip yeah, yeah. So they charge 275 so. to 375. Again, a price range. We're not comparing prices and we're not setting prices um, for repair. Now, uh, the crew's been with them for 14 years. They have it down to a science. So that's hats off to you, Will. That I sounds mean, that like is that is a problems. system. I mean, I, I know companies in my area for gate repairs that are 700 to 1,000, and they're not, it's subpar gate repairs. I mean, you're yeah. talking. You're just chucking a truck going out there and throwing bolts inside of something that you know it, it's not done right, and they're charging a lot of money. Well, and that's that's why Will's doing three or four a day. No, yeah, he's got you know what I mean, just because sure. doing it right. I mean, oh, we lost Sean again 14 years now. Wow, yeah, 14 years like that's incredible. That and that tells you a little bit more about Will's company, too, right? That's that they've awesome. retained people for 14 years, so that that tells you. This is one part of a bigger company that has things figured out. That that explains how he's doing three to four a day, though. You know, 14. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure when he first started, his first month or two was one a week or something, you know, of those ranges. Yeah, could be. But to your point, I mean, as soon as you start marketing that and marketing it, guys, marketing it could be your phone live saying, hey, guys, I just wanted to show you. We just wrapped up repairing this gate. Here's what we did. The posts were fine. We had the, you know document the process and be like if you guys have a gate that's not acting like a gate if it sags or drags and it's hard to open let me know i'd love to look at it yeah like that's literally it and that's for free let that eat 
Put oh. it out in the in the YouTube world. That's awesome. I've never never thought that you could get for three to four a day, but I, I believe in my market here, we could easily do that. It's just I have to market it to the market. You, well, and you have to create a process. Yep. You know, like you said, they have it down to a science. So yep. he has a documented process that it is here is step one all the way to step 32. And if we oh. follow these steps, Gates going to work like a dream. That's awesome. I think he's got to figure it out. I think so. I, and this is, again, this is a great example of everyone does things a little bit differently too. You know, Will Will's has these two guys that specialize in gate repair. And Michael, what do you bet that this leads to more business down the road too? I guarantee you he keeps two crews busy with that one crew. I yeah. Oh, absolutely. Especially if he's got that truck wrapped. If you yeah, got right. Truck, absolutely. Busy right there. Well, absolutely. You know, and so you got, so think about from the client's perspective. And so he probably has competition that charges a lot more for gates. So he charges a reasonable price and does it well. That's a recipe for success, you yeah. know, and, and he's fast at it and he's efficient. And that's how he can get the price down because these guys are fast and efficient at what they do. Um, yeah. So next time, once that fence needs repair were re replaced, I bet he's the first call that these people have. I think he thinks like almost everyone does. And that's the reason most people don't do gate repairs and stuff is because they feel like they're not offering a service to their customer that they would want to receive. But he is offering a service to his customer that I would want to receive. I mean, I would call him and be like, come repair my gate. And right. that's a good deal. I mean, that's that's awesome. And he's, he's doing a great work. Like I said, and that's the part, reason why I've never really gotten into it because like, I just don't feel fair charging them what it takes us to do it because we're not efficient at it. Sure. Sure. And that's fair. So Will actually comes at it from a different way. So he says they sell a lot of stain, and the stain sells a lot of gates. Wow, I can I could see that. No, that definitely makes perfect sense. You're there, the gates, the fence been there for six months or a year. He's having yeah. problems. Yeah, wow. when you're doing the walk through, the first sales consultation on the on staining the fence, when you open that gate, you're like, oh, yep. oh, this thing's this thing's really hard to open. That's what, all. What if we what if we fix this real quick and then we stain this thing? What do you think? He's got a snowball effect. He does. I like it. I like it a lot. Guys, I mean, that's this is one example of guys that figure out how to specialize. Right? I, th I think the more you can specialize, the better. Uh, there's a book out there. Who is it? Michael Setzer, maybe? The Pumpkin Plan. Um, that's a good one to read. That is absolutely a good read. But, well, I tell you what, guys. So we are three hours into a two-and-a-half-hour broadcast. So maybe we ought to consider wrapping this thing up. Uh, congratulations to Chattahoochee Fence and Map Fence uh, for winning the Who, What, When, Where, Why contest that we started at Chesterfield Fence in Richmond, Virginia. If I can figure out which way to put my pointer, there we go. Um, Mike, I mean, first and foremost, I, I know everyone, I know you and I have talked about it, and I know everyone else has thanked you, but I really do appreciate you hosting everybody out there. Oh. It was a great event, and, and I really like your location. Thank you. I appreciate it. I had so much fun having you all out here, and it was just a blessing to receive so much I just I can't believe it even happened still to this day that y'all guys came out here, man. It, it's awesome. And I can't wait to come to your place. I'm super excited. I think I was going to go first. I was like, oh, I've been in do too many this year. But it's like I can't miss it after talking to y'all today and going, I can't. I got to come. It's it's in my blood. It's it's sunk in. And if other people can start to feel that way, they, they'll they start feeling a lot of growth. I mean, you got to know that it, it does cost money. It does take time out of your productivity. Yep. But you get back to work that next Monday and you get three times as much done as you did that Monday before. That's right. Yeah, it's always an investment, yep. right? It, it, but it, but it's exactly that. It's investment into your future growth. Absolutely. I, I'm, I'm always. So my process now is rather than take notes, I send emails to my team. I'm like, hey, here's a golden nugget. Remind me to talk to you about this on Monday. Yeah. Uh, and then my Mondays are typically just filled with meetings with all the you, going over all these ideas. I love it. It is, it is really great. But like I said, thank you. Nice. I absolutely appreciate you. But yeah, guys, more information will be coming forthwith. We'll be coming soon for the next Stain and Steel University, uh, which will be held here in Springfield, Missouri. It'll be the last Thursday, Friday of October. Let me look at my calendar real quick. It will be 28th and 29th. See, I'm glad I, I almost said 27th, 28th. The training event will be the 28th, 29th. The 27th, which is the Wednesday, uh, we'll, Ozark Fence will be open to everyone coming to the event to kind of walk through. We'll do a, a, a 
shop walk, if you want to call it that. Also, our whole team will be available. So if you've got some questions about operations or production, we'll have our team available for that as well. Awesome. After, after Michael did that for us, we I figured that's a good idea. We need to do that as well. Oh, thank you. Of course, of course. Well, guys, Michael, thank you so much. I appreciate you being so giving of your time. Oh, not a problem. Thank you for having me on here. Been You're fun. very welcome. Guys out there, I'm Joe Evers, the fence expert, and I'm reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. We'll see you guys later. Later, Jeff. See you, Michael.